Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome along to a very sunny, very blustery King Power Stadium where this afternoon Leicester City are taking on Brighton and Hove Albion in the Women's Super League. Just about half an hour to go until kickoff, and only two points separating the two sides. So, a very important game for the Foxes this afternoon. With us in the studio to keep us on the straight and narrow, hopefully, Kerry Sarup and Chloe Hudson Jones. Very good to have both of your company. And, Kerry, as I was saying, this is a big game, only two points separating these two sides. I imagine these are the exciting ones when you're playing all of your direct rivals in the table. Yeah, these are the most important games. You know, we've, we've both been there ourselves when you're playing teams in and around you in the league and you just want to get those points to segregate you and move you away from the teams certainly below you. So I think Leicester will definitely be looking to do that. But yeah, it's a massive game for both teams. Just really important at this point in the season to try and pick up as many points as possible. And Chloe, as you're saying, you've both been in these kind of positions. Yeah. So, so take me inside the dressing room right now. What is going through your mind when you're in one of these games against direct rivals? I think, like Kerry said, it's so so important against against your rivals, and, and then and, and picking up as many points as possible. But it's about the performance as well, as well, and it's about getting the fast start. Whichever team gets the fast start, then they can settle into the game, get the early goal, and really kind of push on from there. Because I think both both sides. They've had a tough season so far, but you know where Leicester City are. This could be their best ever finish in the WSL, so that is a real big, big incentive for them. Absolutely, I mean they've already matched the points total for, from last season, and since the second half of the season, I guess has started this this year in 2024. Yeah. Won six of the ten games. Have you kind of noticed a difference in Leicester? Is it they almost matured as a team together? Yeah, I think well, obviously yeah, I was in that relegation scrap with uh, Leicester last year when I played for Tottenham and yeah, they've definitely improved since then. They made some good signings mm -hmm. uh, in the summer, which I think has definitely bolstered and improved the squad and I think it's just confidence, you know, they've uh, been doing well in the FA Cup, which is, is great, semi-final against Tottenham coming up and you know, big, winning big games like that and having good cup runs ultimately influences your confidence in the league as well and that's starting to show. They've had some good results recently. Um, you know, both teams beat Brighton and um, Bristol convincingly. Uh, I think uh, Brighton have had the tougher run of games more recently. They've had Man City and, and Man United. So I think it's just all about confidence. And I think certainly going into this yeah. game, Leicester might have uh, a bit more confidence than Brighton do at the moment. Yeah, I think they're really an established WSL side now, Leicester. I think the last kind of few seasons, they've been kind of working out what type of team they want to be and actually you can see by the within the transfer windows kind of whether whether it's in the summer or january they've added strength uh, to them so actually they haven't just now got a strong starting 11 they've got a really strong substitutions bench as well so it makes competition for places really stronger and that actually pushes you know the the performance of the players as well when they've got someone on their on their heels trying to fight for their place and i think you know last couple of seasons we've looked at them as kind of Will they stay in the WSL? Are they hanging on? Now they're really established and looking at kind of a mid-table finish. I mean, in terms of, you're saying that about the strength in depth, like if you look at the starting 11 today, there's four changes now mm -hmm. from, um, from the Tottenham game uh, at the weekend. And does this kind of back up what we've been saying when you can bring in four players of the quality they, that they have today? Yeah, definitely, uh, absolutely. And actually, you know, we were looking at the starting eleven, and some, you know, we were talking about, you know, I'm surprised that such and such is starting over such and such. But that is the competition, and actually now it's whoever's in form, not just in the games, but in training as well, and protecting players when they're going into, you know, the semi-final of the FA Cup, etc. But they have got a wealth of players that they can choose from, and you know, a lot of them now. It's not just, you know, you start eleven, that's it. It's tactical changes. It depends who they're playing against on the weekend. So I think it's a really good place to be for the for the side. Well, shall we get some insight into why those changes uh, have happened today? I, I caught up with uh, the Leicester City assistant manager, Jen, uh, a little bit earlier on today. Jen, you described last weekend the defeat at Spurs as frustrating. How do you channel that into this weekend? Uh, I think we, because we know we can do better. Uh, I think that was the main thing. We were disappointed with large elements of the game and it was just about putting it right for this weekend, which hopefully we will. Talk about the final ball being the problem after so many chances created, particularly in the last sort of 70 minutes of the game. What are the sort of things that you can tweak? Just being more clinical. You know, I think the important thing was that we did create those chances and I think uh, on a normal day we probably would have taken them. So again, today, if we get in those positions, we need to be clinical. And you mentioned that Spurs are similar in many ways, especially in the transition to Brighton. Does that help in terms of your preparation and what the players should expect? Uh, a little bit, but look, at the end of the day, Brighton might throw something different in there. Uh, I think they're different to what they were at the start of the season because they actually like to keep the ball a little bit more now. So we just need to be prepared for, for all elements of the game.
In terms of the team selections today, four changes for, from last weekend. Why these four in particular? Uh, I think we just needed to freshen a few things up, um, you know, especially going into these next two games um, and then for the, for the final parts of the season. And also just because of um, good training performances, you know, that's the key thing for, for us, that players are rewarded for, for good training performances as well. The first Leicester start for Asmita Ale today. What are you looking for from her? Uh, energy, confidence on the ball, progressions up the pitch and the tenaciousness that she always shows. And Deanne Rose up front replacing Lena Peterman. Um, how many problems do you think she can cause Brighton in particular? Hopefully a lot, you know, providing we, we find her and with good quality balls. And look, we know that she's a threat whenever she plays. And look, hopefully we get her on the ball as much as possible and she can be clinical with those chances. Just finally, this is the start of a run of all of the teams around you in the WSL. How important would it be to kick off today with three points? Massive. It's important that we respond to, to last week and the disappointment. And, and I think we will, you know, as long as we execute the game plan as best uh, as we know we can, I think we'll be fine today. Good luck, Jeff. Brilliant. Thank you. So, interesting stuff from uh, Jen Foster there. Karis, you played with her. What gives me insight into what she's like as a person, as a coach? Yeah, she's a great uh, person. I think when we played together at the Birmingham Centre of Excellence, she was always a, like a vocal um, person, you know, and I think she took those leadership qualities into her coaching now. And yeah, I'm really pleased for her, you know, really pleased that she's gone on and to be managing at a WSL club is, is fantastic. And she's only a young coach. I think she's probably still in late, late 20s, so it's not, not a bad position to be in at all. So I'm no, really pleased to, for Jen. I think the more female coaches we can see at this level, the better. And interesting, Chloe, what she was saying there about four changes today. Mm -hmm looking to shake things up a little bit, but also rewarding performances in training, which must be important for the squad unity when you have so much strength in depth. Absolutely, you know, because no matter what the performances are, you have to look at, they train so much in the week and actually the certain tactical changes, certain players might be kind of more natural, naturally suited to those anyway. And so, you know, the changes that I'm sure we'll discuss in a minute, I think they're all positive changes. But you want to see that, you want to see that, you want to see kind of because players want to start. How are they going to get a chance to start if you don't take into consideration the form and training? So I think that's, you know, credit to the players for putting in those performance and credit to, to, for, for choosing them. Uh, one of the changes, we should probably start with a first start for, for Leicester, for Azmita Ale at, uh, at right back. What are you expecting to see from her? We all know Azzy well. Um, she was at Tottenham with me uh, last season. She's on loan here, obviously, from, from them. Um, yeah, technically siren player, she's uh, yeah, good, good to have on the ball and she likes to get forward as well. I mean that's certainly she's developed over the last few years in the game is that ability to, to get forward and we were talking earlier about yeah. CJ Bott and she brings that to her performance as well. So I think that's what Leicester like from their fullbacks, they like them to bomb on and yeah. help create those attacking overloads down the side and as much as as he will have to focus on her defensive display, um, especially against some quick wingers that she might come up against today, I think it'd be good for, to, for her, to see her get forward as well. You're nodding along, Chloe, the whole way through that. That's the sort of thing you're I expecting. Am. Yeah, so I was with Villa, uh, with Azzy, uh, yeah. for, for years when she broke through to the senior side and she was really annoying, actually. She's a 16-year-old. She was fitter <laughs> than everybody, quicker than everybody. Um, but I didn't let her beat me in any of the tests, which was good. Um, but, yeah, she, she's an absolute athlete. She's very competitive. As you know, Carrie said, she's very, very technical as well, but she can do both sides of the game. So I'm really pleased for her to have the nod today. Listening to Jen Foster talking about last weekend at, at Tottenham, one of the things that was missing was that final ball, being yeah. clinical. It's another thing she mentioned there. Deanne Rose coming in to the, to the front line. She's saying if they can get her the service, yeah. she can cause some real problems. How do they do that today? Yeah, she's a key player for them, isn't she? And she's strong, athletic, quick. So, you know, certainly she's, I think she's playing out on the wing today. So. She's getting her on the ball and in those 1v1 situations, she's, she's very good, isn't she? Yeah. So if, can, if Leicester will use her as an outlet for sure, Brighton will obviously be aware of that so that, you know, whether they have a, a kind of strategy to try and stop her. But yeah, if she can get, get on the ball and get those crosses into the box and then you've got the likes of Aileen Whelan and Rantal who can get on the end of it and um, both of them can be very clinical inside the box. Is that is that the key then? So you spoke about the, the, the first 20 minutes didn't really get going, but after that created so many chances. Mm -hmm. As players, do you do you take confidence from the fact that you create so much, or is it frustration that oh, we created much so much but still lost one nil? Um, I think you have to take confidence from it, and that's actually what the training grounds for for after. Actually, if you're not converting those chances, then you have to work on it and try and replicate those situations within training. And then uh, once you replicate, then you get confidence within training to take into a game. And as we've been mentioning about about Rose, she likes to to be facing towards kind of you know the attacking, and they have to give her the service that she's so quick, she's so agile, she's so strong and powerful 
we want to see her running towards the opposition goal, running towards defenders because they, you know, Brighton will have some difficulties if they can get her the service that she needs. And I imagine we've, we talked to her about her before we came on air, but Yuta Rantale is going to yeah. be crucial in that play that you really like, Chloe. Yeah, yeah, I've been I've been really really impressed with her since she's come in at Leicester. I think she's made a massive difference, uh, and she has had that she had added that kind of clinic clinicality with with regards to kind of the final third with Leicester, and she can she can create her own chances. She she creates assists, but her vision and the quality on the ball, you know, I think she's. She's made a real difference and she'll make, make a massive impact to her today. And it, but it still relies on giving her the service. You know, they have to have the quality service into her and not allow her to just kind of be focusing on, on you know, the scraps. But she finds really good pockets within the game that she can then turn and then face forward. It'll be very interesting to watch. Now, there's about 20 minutes to go to kick mm -hmm. off. Chloe, we've got to let you go because you're commentating on this game I am. as well. And, I am. Uh, from experience, them stairs up to the gantry, <laughs> they're no joke. Um, so. Good luck with Thank that you. little Thank uh, you one. We'll hear from you Thank a little you. bit later on. Thank and uh, while Chloe heads off, let's hear from uh, Janice um, Kamen, who I also spoke to as the players arrived at the King Power this afternoon. Janice, your manager described last week at Spurs as a frustrating day. How has that channeled into this week in training? Yeah, I think it just motivated us even more to, to get this week right and today right as well. After the first 20 minutes last week, created a lot of chances, just couldn't really put it away. That final ball being a problem. How do you sort of rectify that for today? Yeah, I think we worked a lot on it in this weekend, uh, this week and uh, also watched some clips again from the game. So it gives you a little bit of background to, yeah, to go at it today. What were the sort of things that you've learned from, from watching last weekend back? Um, I think we made it worse in our head than it actually was, so I think that's that's a bit comforting. But I think, yeah, we need to play from our qualities, play how we know how to play and uh, just get that win today. Is that the, the main takeaway this week, to focus on what you did well, in particularly in the second half? Yeah, I think so. And uh, what we do well, we need to build on and uh, then just be defensively ready for the, th the threats that they have. And uh, yeah, hope to make it a, a nice afternoon here. In terms of today, Brighton, in many ways, play kind of similarly to Spurs. D does that help in the preparation for this week? Yeah, I think so, because then uh, it makes the game plan a little bit easier since the, the opponent is a bit similar. Um, but like I said before, I think we need to focus on our qualities and, and go after it. It's the start now of a run of games against teams that are around you in the WSL. With the aims of finishing in the top half, how important is this run of fixtures? Yeah, I think uh, I said it with some of the teammates, like it's, it's a little final today and I think that's how we need to see every game because they're going to be very important, the three points today. So, um, yeah, happy to go and get after it. Wish you the best of luck. Thank you very much. So interesting um, listening there about the similarities between Spurs and Brighton, particularly the transition game. That's something that Leicester are going to have to be mindful of today. Yeah, you know, the game they played against Spurs um, last weekend, they, they conceded the goal on a quick transition with, with Spurs pace and the same today with Brighton, there's definitely something they need to be aware of. Brighton got the pace of uh, Katie Robinson as, as an example, so I think based on last week's performance and how they conceded, Leicester will definitely be more aware of that today. And I suppose one of the crucial players in terms of trying to break that up and guard against it is going to be Sam Tierney. It's a special day for her. She's very recently made her 100th appearance for, for Leicester's first Leicester player to, to reach that milestone. She's going to get a, uh, a frame shirt um, before kickoff. Also, I think her friends and family are here as well. She's someone that, that you know quite well. Yeah, I've played against Sam for years. And is she I mean, a nightmare? Yeah, no, she's, she's um, like, what I call like a proper grafter, like yeah. she breaks up the play and gets stuck in, no-nonsense player, and I like that. I'm a bit like an old-school uh, <laughs> no-nonsense player, but yeah, no, really pleased for her to get her 100th appearance. It just shows she's a consistent player, you know, um, the, st the staff here at Leicester, they want her in the team every week, and she's a valuable player, not just, you know, great at breaking up the play, but she's also a leader and can demonstrate and motivate those, um, you know, motivate the players to to go, go forward and, and start the attack. So no, really pleasing for her and uh, yeah, she'll, she's fully deserved of her, her, um, you know, her shirt today. Uh, we haven't really mentioned too much uh, about Brighton, but in the reverse fixture, I think we maybe saw the real dangerous player uh, who scored both goals, um, Elizabeth Turland, who again is someone who, third top goal scorer in WSL this season. Yeah, no, she's doing really well, having a fantastic season for Brighton. You know, scored 11 goals in, in the WSL. It's only Bunny Shaw and uh, I think Lauren James are ahead of her, so you know she's having it's a. It's not bad company no, to be yeah, in, so is it? It's My not goodness. at all. Yeah, it's not at all. But yeah, Leicester again will be aware of her. They'll highlight her as a, a key player for, for Brighton. Um, as you say, she scored against 
Leicester in the reverse fixture. So it'll be interesting whether she does add to that tally today. When you are up against a, a team that has maybe one particular star, particularly scoring as many goals as she has in a team that's struggled a little bit, how does that sort of change as an opposition player when there is one player that you know that they're going to be looking for? Yeah, you, you're definitely mindful of them. Um, you know, I think of an example like when Kira Walsh was at Man City. You know, we'd always get a player just literally on her, trying to stop her from distributing. And it depends on where that player is in the team. But you know, the Leicester players will definitely be aware of her, whether it is that they get two players to double up on her, or certainly when she's on the ball, just making sure someone is getting in her face and trying to limit what she does because you know she can score not just in the box but she can also score from distance so as soon as she's on the ball I'm sure there'll be a Leicester player <laughs> closing her down pretty much straight away. I, I mentioned it both to, to the manager and, and to Yanis there but this is the start of a really crucial period for Leicester playing all of the teams around them if they are going to get the, the aims and the ambitions of finishing in the top half this season this run beating these teams is so crucial what is the mindset when you go into games like this? It is crucial, like you say. Um, I think the mindset is you just have to focus on yourself. You try not to worry too much about the outside influences and what it could mean in, in terms of your league position. You just need to, as a player, focus on your performance, what your roles and responsibilities are and, and what you need to do. So the girls will be aware of it, of course, but I think when, once you step over that white line, the focus is just on you know knowing your job and, and what you need to do. But yeah, massive game. I think it's a home game as well. So whenever you're at your home pitch, you want to turn it into your fortress and certainly beat those teams in and around you. So yeah, real big uh, game for Leicester today. I was interested in listening to, to Mikey Harris, interim manager at Brighton, was talking about how they've struggled a little bit at the pitch that they play on at home. Looking forward to playing on a Premier League quality surface here. It might suit them. It'll suit Leicester as well. Do you think that might court, prove crucial? A, a surface that the opposition aren't necessarily used to playing on? Yeah, definitely. You know, it's, it's funny that he says that and it's probably true. You know, if you're tra you know, Brighton train on a nice surface every day at the training grounds, so then go and play at the, the pitch that they do and it's not quite up to standards and it does it impacts on your performance and how you can play so yeah I think they'll be really excited to play on a, a carpet like this and obviously Leicester playing it every single week so it's yeah. definitely a, an advantage for them but yeah overall I just hope it's a nice it's a good game some good football nice football and we'll see what the result is at the end well it should be so as we close in on kickoff very close now how can you see it going I think based on form I think Leicester will, should win. Um, it's their home pitch as well, like we've already mentioned, and they've got real quality in depth. You know, there's a lot of um, players that have contributed attacking wise and scored goals, whereas for Brighton, they do rely on Turland. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll go over Leicester win. Of course. I mean, you don't have to say that. No, yet, I was but... going to say anyway, <laughs> not just because I'm on Leicester TV. <laughs> but it should be, I imagine, quite a free flowing game. Two teams that like to play the right way as well. Yeah, I think, um, and that's the way the WSL is going now. All teams want to try and dominate possession. It's not like, you know, back in my day when I was playing <laughs> even before WSL where teams would go for the long ball. But, but, you know, teams want to play. And certainly when you've got a pitch like this where you can play some really nice football, I think it will, it will uh, make out for a good game today. Looking forward to it, Kerry. Thank you so much for your company. We'll catch up again at mm -hmm. half time. We're going to take a very, very short break. But on the other side of this, Nama Korn and Chloe, if she's made it up to the gantry, we'll take you through the first half. Enjoy. Who wants to join me? Shopping at King Power. Three day, two night stay book. See ya. To the rooftop bar. To snap a photo from my IG. To eat the famous batai. The new collection is calling me. Sure, there's a perfume I want. Let me ask my sis. Yes, of course I'm going. Let's start city. Fox never quit. Let's go. It's possible because King Power is more than just duty free. Shop latest trends in beauty and gadgets. Your coolest staycation. The legendary Pad Thai, best street food in town. A place to support your team. A fancy dinner. Enjoy shopping at downtown stores and online, or even the thrill of a new experience. Explore your everyday possibilities. The power of possibilities. King Power. This is Fox's Hub, a brand new place for the Blue Army to follow the Foxes this season. Whether you're listening in, goes on the outside and finds a way through. Or watching live, make sure you don't miss a moment.
Young Bisegong. Le Mia is the belief that perfection lies within the details, where the finest ingredients deserve the finest craftsmanship. In every pursuit of perfection, there is passion and perseverance. Where attention to detail inspires a masterpiece that's balanced and in harmony. This is the Vermeer philosophy, brewed into every drop of Chang beer. This is the taste of Thai perfection. Chang beer. We brew friendship. Our lives move quickly. They're journeys of many choices. Journeys within which we each take our own turns for our own reasons. Trading is no different. Doing your thing, showing off your skills, changing the result for yourself. It's easy when you know how. With its financial services, FBS makes trading simple from anywhere on any device, putting knowledge and tools in your hands so that whether you have a lot of time or only a little, and whether you're doing it just for yourself today or for someone else's tomorrow, your ability will shine through. Wherever you want your trading journey to take you, it begins with FBS. FBS. Make your own way. It's possible to be, to go, to get, to be, to go, to get. Dining, traveling, shopping, chilling. Vacationing, cheering, everything is possible every day. The power of possibilities, King Power. She's been given the nod today because she's, she, I'm sure she's earned it kind of, you know, at training, etc. And she's been very patient since she's come on loan. So a great, great, great time for her today. An FA Cup semi-final is on the horizon for Leicester. Three weeks from now, the tensions will be ticking and the nerves will be jangling with Tottenham standing between the Foxes and a walk down Wembley Way.
potential cup glory this season has got everybody dreaming but there's still work to be done between now and the 14th of April starting with the visit of Brighton in the W. Guys looking up other than over their shoulders this season particularly the Foxes who have already secured as many points as they did in the entirety of last campaign. Three more will be welcome today to better last term's tally. Well, let's take a look at who starts this afternoon at King Power Stadium for Leicester City. Spurs got the early sight as seven days ago ahead of that FA Cup semi-final when the two sides met in the league. There were four changes from the narrow 1-0 loss in London. Two of those changes come in the back line as Josie Green is into the side and it's the first Leicester City start for the player on loan from Spurs. Asnita Ale at right back. A rare start for Amelia Pelgander in the heart of the pitch as well. And so too for Deanne Rose, who is in from the beginning for just the second time in the WSL this season. Yuta Antala is a player in red-hot form right now, scoring the two goals to send City to the FA Cup semi-finals. And there is firepower on the bench in the form of the likes of Peterman and Takarada. For Brighton, Mikey Harris is the interim coach after the club parted ways with Mel Phillips at the start of last month. They've also made alterations for this one after losing to Manchester City last week. A notable absentee is Maria torres Dottier, the central defender and ever-present at the back for Brighton this season, but not today. She drops out of the squad entirely. Poppy Pattinson returns to the 11 after missing three games with suspension. Former PSG player Lee Meng Wen and Greece international Biasari also come into the side. Goals-wise, Elizabeth Turland has been knocking them in at a great rate this season. Her 11 WSL goals this term is a tally only bettered by Bunny Shaw and Lauren James. Today's referee is Cheryl Foster, assisted by Emily Carney and Ruby Sykes. And the cheer goes around King Power Stadium as Sam Tierney recently celebrated 100 Leicester City appearances. And she is commemorated for that achievement with a frame shirt. Someone who has been so important to this Foxes side in recent times. Hardly ever misses a game. Proud moment for her and her family, no doubt. The Easter holidays not too far away for the youngsters, but that won't deter them from turning up here to support their side as we prepare to get underway here at King Power Stadium. When you're smiling, booming around the stadium. And no doubt the message will be from those Leicester City players to right or wrong from last week against Spurs again they felt they should have won and they have a chance to do so as they take on Brighton here this afternoon So before we get underway, a message that discrimination of any kind is not welcome in this game. So the sun's shining on this spring Sunday. Leicester hoping to put last week's defeat right against Brighton. Of course, Spurs, who they lost to, are the opponents that the Foxes will face in the FA Cup semi-finals. That's in three weeks' time, but the focus very firmly has to be this afternoon's game against Brighton Chloe Jones alongside me and I guess we always say this it doesn't matter whether it's FA Cup semi-finals or a league game or any game for that matter you want to make a good start absolutely I think both of these sides they they've actually had good finishes uh, in the games that they've started quickly and you can see kind of both teams at the moment that they, they you know the first kind of few seconds they've tried to they've tried to both be on the front foot and are expecting that for, from both teams for the first kind of 15 minutes or so try and kind of 
press the opposition, try and, trying to win the ball higher up the pitch so they can make something happen. I think that's the thing when you're playing against the, 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 the teams that are around you. I think these are the most important games as well, especially when, you know, Leicester, they, they're really looking to secure themselves as a, a mid-table finish and the best finish they've ever had in the WSL. Um, so I think these are as, as much of importance as, you know, the, the semi final because it sets them up for that as well. Here's Rantala, who's been electric in front of goal this season. One of the main reasons why Leicester have already made an improvement on last season's 16-point tally. Six games to go, and there's a very good chance that they'll better their points record from last season. Brighton, meanwhile, even though they are below the Foxes in the standings, know that if they beat Leicester here at King Power Stadium this afternoon, they can actually go above them in the standings. So incentive for both sides. That's good pressure. Not too much pressure, says the referee, Cheryl Foster. Maybe just a warning sign there for Brighton not to take a little too long on the ball, because Leicester will be at you. Oh, definitely. And I think, you know, the experience that Vicky Lasada has got, she won't make that mistake again. But great pressure from Leicester. And, yeah, unfortunately, you know, gave away uh, a free kick early on. But you would prefer that and, you know, be aggressive uh, in, against their back, their back line or when the midfield drops in, because do not give them any minutes or seconds on the ball to have, have the time and space to be able to play. So I don't mind that from Leicester. Rantala looking to slide Whelan into the penalty area and she gets a shot away. It's her 50th Leicester City appearance today. Wouldn't she like to mark it with a goal? And the first chance goes down as a Leicester one. Yeah, she definitely would. And obviously he's playing against her previous team in uh, Aileen Whelan. You know, she played, she played for Brighton for many years and then as he made the move to Leicester that she'll, she'll have that uh, extra incentive today, motivation to get that performance and fingers crossed the goal for her. As you say, Whelan spent many a year, many a season at Brighton and Hove Albion, five years in total between 2017 and 2022. Meanwhile, the Foxes have a free kick here. Foul on Momiki. Always important when you get these early set pieces to try and make them count. Yeah, definitely. It's all about the delivery, you know, Leicester. They've got, they've got really good players that are willing, you know, the likes of Howard, who wins that aerial battle. You know, they'll look to try and kind of aim this, aim this free kick her, I'm sure. Well, Howard is at the back of the queue for Leicester City, maybe just trying to hide and goes the way into the box. First of all, the delivery needs to be a good one. And it comes with the left foot. Howard is rising. And the flag is rising as well on the near side. But you can see the plan. Yeah, definitely. And I think she just made the run a little bit too early, didn't she? And, you know, I think the, you know, the, the free kick set up with the player running over, I think she just made it too early. But, yeah, it, yeah I had the sixth sense, didn't I, then? Uh, <laughs> that they were I can tell you've the played the game, can't we? <laughs> no, she, she's, she's brilliant. And actually, I'm, I'm surprised that Brighton kind of didn't mark her tighter uh, and, you know, get the get maybe two either side of her because she had a free run into the box it was unfortunate for, for Howard that it was timed a little bit a little bit incorrectly yeah you're right when you think about where Sophie Howard was stood mm. it's closer to the edge of the D rather than the yeah. edge of the box on the near side so plenty of room to use yeah definitely and I think in those positions you just expect Brighton you know you you, need, you want to stop the runs and you want to be in the way, but yeah, free run. But, you know, that's, that's good news for Leicester if that's the way that Brighton want to set up. Bags fanned. Yeah, it's a loose one, but recovery comes from Carabali. Swept out to the left-hand side. Field from the Colombian again. Rantala just loses it in the sunshine. Smashed away by Howard. Brought down by Losada. Here's Bags Van now back to the goalkeeper, Sophie Bagley. Just wonder whether Bagley might ask for a baseball cap or something because the sun is out at King Power Stadium this afternoon. 
Well, hint of a foul in there on Sam Tierney. Referee says no. Yeah, I think Cheryl Foster, I think she's she's a, she's a brilliant official and obviously, as many know, she played in the WSL for Liverpool for many years, so she's got a great understanding and experience of the game. Fighting with Olma. Hacking back is Mamiki. Leicester have it now with Howard. I think Leicester seen the more settled side at the moment. I think, you know, they're being a lot more patient on the ball. They're trying to you know, they're moving it well, you know, across the back line. They're not forcing any play. Uh, and they're just trying to, you can just see, they're just trying to draw Brighton out a little bit because, as you can see, Brighton is so compact in the middle. Yeah, absolutely. And that opens up spaces on either side. Meanwhile, the space in the centre is being utilised as it is threaded again towards Alien Whelan. This time a little too heavy. And behind it goes for a goal kick. But the positive early sign, seven minutes in. Uh, all coming from Leicester. Yeah, you could see what she wanted to do, couldn't you? As me to Ali then, and I think, and I think just Aileen Whelan. I think she was just looking at the in the other direction before making the run. But yeah, you know, nice, nice proactive play. And as soon as as he gets the ball, it's, you know, it's from the front foot, it's driving forward, and that's what we want to see. Only 22, as me to Ali, but loads of experience. This is Rantala looking to deliver towards the back post. And slashed out of play by Lee Meng Wen for a Leicester corner. Yeah, great chance, wasn't it, then? I wasn't sure whether it was going to go straight in there from this right hand side, but yeah, I think it was just asking good touch from Brighton just to just to keep it clear, but great ball across and then yeah, uh, you know, look at look at uh, Dana Rose, you know, trying to get in and that ha Brighton had to get that touch on that ball then. But I think it goes back to, as you mentioned, that the sun there. I'm not sure whether Sophie Bagley kind of misjudged the ball then or something. So Rantala takes the corner short. Leicester just trying to switch up the angle here. It's poked in towards Mamiki and too far ahead of Whelan. It's a good point, isn't it, Chloe? Because by the time the second half comes around, the sun might be even lower, which might cause a problem for Kopf. We just don't know. Yeah, they'll have to judge that, won't they? Whilst they're, whilst they're going long, or maybe the, the stadium might be high enough just to, just to potentially block that out, but we'll have to see. But Nice to be talking about the sun <laughs> and problems with the weather. Yeah, it's difficult with what to wear today, but then it's always cold up here. <laughs> Mamiki. Rose, she's done well. It's poked in towards the six-yard line. No one in blue there. Might be a second chance with Tierney. Cayman. Gets the return from Tierney. Does find a way into the penalty area. Whelan wants a corner. The decision is goal kick. I think Leicester, they're just a little bit more on the front foot, aren't they? And, uh, you know, trying to trying to get get first to the ball and you can see what we're trying to do. But, you know, we, we saw there just an opportunity for, for Rose. That's exactly what she can do. We spoke earlier about her getting the service to be able to, to make that difference. And she wants to be facing, you know, the opposition's goal and great position for her to be in just they need just runners into the box less they need more runners to be able to get on the end of those great balls being played played across across the box Howard with the switch didn't quite get the radar right on that occasion well Leicester secured their WSL survival on the final day of last season courtesy of a victory over Brighton it was a tight one though a one nil it was Ava Baker who got the decisive goal. In all fairness, Albion were already safe, so it was up to City to get the win, and they did, meaning it was Reading who ultimately dropped down to the championship. But there have been some entertaining games between these two sides over recent seasons. Yeah, I think that's what we want to see. We, we keep talking about how the WSL is more competitive, and it really is. I think every game now, it's whether it's kind of you know, you know, bottom of the league versus versus top of the league. All the games are a lot closer now, aren't they? Again, but then these are the ones that we want to see—the ones that are battling it, battling it out for kind of to get finished as high as possible in the league. As you say, these are the sort of games that sometimes matter a little bit more. Brighton, with their first foray forward, might just bundle its way through, and it does. Be a tricky sari 
flashing an effort over the top of Cops crossbar. That's where Leicester just need to be careful. That's Brighton's first real attack of the game, and it results in an effort on goal. Yeah, that's a warning sign, isn't it? I mean, Brighton haven't created a lot of chances, but the quality that Sarri has got, you expect her to, to bury that, but that's an absolute warning sign for Leicester, and they need to shut up shop and be a little bit more disciplined in, in that bat line. Nice turn from Rantala. Finds Tierney. Runs into Pattinson. Pattinson, who missed the last three Brighton games with suspension, sent off against Liverpool retrospectively after action was taken on an apparent stamp. So Mikey Harris, pleased to have her back in the Brighton ranks today. Well, they've gained one defender back in Pattinson. They've lost Torres Dottier, which is a blow for them. Alongside Bergsvand, one of the ever-presents in the Albion back line this season. That's loose from Karabali. Momiki, now Tierney. Cayman making a run as well. But left for Momiki, who finds Yuta Rantala. And onto her left, Rantala forcing an acrobatic save from Sophie Bagley. Well, she's someone who has had no trouble in finding the back of the net so far this season and very nearly did a game there but for a flying Sophie Bagley save. Yeah, great intricate play, wasn't it, from Leicester, trying to, in the, you know, in really tight areas in the central of the pitch, but when you've got a player like Mamiki in there who wants to play, you know, one, two touch football, and yeah, great play from, from Rantala here, and as you mentioned, you know, she scored a lot of goals recently, so that's the, you know, the option that she wanted to take it onto her left, on, left foot and get that shot off, and yeah, good save from Bagley. In comes the corner flipped away by Sari. Ali looking to return it. Brighton able to repel the Leicester danger. Well, Brighton may have lost four of their last five games including last week to Manchester City but the one they did win was emphatic they smashed seven past Bristol City that was away from home as well six different scorers on the day so plenty to be aware of from a Leicester City perspective but it has been the Foxes who have started the brighter now being get their communication right Pinto. She's run into trouble here. She's tried to do too much. Won't break for Deanne Rose. Stooping header from Howard. Well, we're into the 15th minute, and from a Leicester perspective, so far so good, really. Yeah, definitely, and I think they've they've been the the team that uh, you know a lot will be a lot more happier with this performance so far. It's just again, it's just creating those those chances and. You know, getting more shots off against against Sophie Badley because they're creating. It's just the final third. Picked up here by Terland. Is Sari. One of the changes made by Brighton today. The Greek international back into the side. Pattinson forward. Dealt with by the recovering Rose. Doesn't get too many starts herself, Deanne Rose, so she'll be hoping to make an impact today. Yeah, she's been there, used more, hasn't she, as a kind of impact player substitution, but, you know, she's earned this start today, and I'm sure, you know, she's already made, a, you know, a few chances, a few, she's already made a massive impact already on the game, so hopefully she can keep that up. I think with Deanne Rose, it's, it's keeping that intensity for the for the full 90 minutes and being able to do that, so let's see what she can she can do for the rest of today. Well, referee Cheryl Foster's just shrugged her shoulders and say, no other choice but to give a free kick there. Well, Miki dashing after it. Robinson, flag is up as Elizabeth Turland looked to burst her way through. And that can be a dangerous sight, but the flag is raised, so 
no trouble this time for Leicester. Yeah, that looked quite tight, didn't it? It did look offside, but great, great ball there from uh, Brighton's Brighton's Robinson. And when you've got Turland, you know we spoke about her earlier, and she's a she's a brilliant player, and she's been scoring a lot of goals for for this Brighton team. So Leicester just need to keep an eye on her and make sure that they're a little bit tighter to her to not allow her that space. Uh, but yeah, fortunately she was offside. Howard down the line towards Rose, away by Caravalli. Sari around the corner. You can see spin away from Howard, and Howard just trying her best to stay with her. And on she goes via Sari for Brighton. Well, Howard felt like she had done enough in terms of recovery. Right, committed a foul just as Sari played that ball into the box. So it will be a Brighton free kick in a good position. Yeah, Sari did well there. And Howard, you know, she kept up with her and then. I think she really she recognised that Saru was going to cross the ball and tried to get in the way, but yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately made contact with Saru, didn't she, and gave away gave her a, a, a free kick in a dangerous area. Well, there is a cluster of Brighton players. The far post, two members of the Leicester City wall. Options right or left foot. The corner that Brighton had against Manchester City. They had a couple of chances where they went short. I wonder whether that might be the option this time around. It's direct and towards the near post. And there's Howard again, heading away, and now there might be a counter here for Leicester with Rose. Lee Mingwen taking no chances. Yeah, I think it's second touch, wasn't it, from Rose then. She, she's got great first contact on it just to take it past uh, the writing defender. And then, yeah, second touch, he should have just gone straight down. Uh, straight down the side, and I think she would have she would have beat the Brighton Brighton press. Um, but yeah, you know, good kind of counter attacking. Just need to get that quality right in those areas. Losada stretching a really nice ball out to that right side. Carabali is out there. It's found its way towards Robinson. And it's a goal kick. Katie Robinson who's been involved with the Lionesses in recent times. Certainly poses plenty of threat on that far side. Yeah, I think Brighton have done well to actually keep Robinson. I'm surprised that kind of some of the, shall we say, higher teams in the in the division haven't haven't gone in for, for looking at a chance for, for, for her. But uh, yeah, she's a great player for, great servant for Brighton. I think they'll keep hold of her for as long as, as, long as they can. Especially when you think of the likes of Mayor Tissier, who went to Manchester United. I know a different position, but similar sort of thinking. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Brighton, Brighton have always had a really, really good youth development and a lot of great players coming through. And you know, similarly to the men, really, <laughs> um, how they kind of have these have these young players and then really develop them and then keep them for as long as they can. Interspersed with experience as well. Just need to look at. Brighton's bench, Emma Kuhlberg, Gunmin Lee, players who have been around the block, should we say, in terms of their experience, not just in the WSL in recent times, but also in some of the top European leagues as well. Mamiki, excellent vision. And here's Yuta Antala now. Up to the edge of the Brighton box and into it and barging away forward. Tierney takes a stab at it, blocked away. This is Rose in the corner for Leicester. Tierney uses her body well. Rantala trying to wrestle that control. Bit of experience there from Cayman. Howard keeps it alive. Yeah, I think when, you, when you've got the likes of Cayman who can play multiple positions all over the pitch really Cayman. Um, I think she gives that just 
extra experience to the back line now she's playing in at you know at the right back position uh, for Leicester and I think she does a really good job of really managing the line uh, making sure that they're stepping up and squeezing the play and as much as we you know we, we lose her more in midfield I think she's been a great servant so far when she's had to sit in at right back how tidy was that from Vicky Losada showing all of that quality which has seen her play for the likes of Arsenal and Barcelona I was going to say when we're talking about players with experience I don't think anyone's got the experience that that she's had on this pitch and you know what a great servant in the game you know across across the globe really and you know it's great to have her in the WSL obviously she was with Manchester City as well before before coming to Brighton and yeah great servant and such a quality player I was trying to fit all of the trophies she's won onto my notes sheet and I ran out of space. <laughs> Champions League with Barcelona, Serie A last season with Roma on the FA Cup. So many trophies for Vicky Losada in her career, 33 years of age now. Still as influential as ever. Meanwhile, here's Mamiki looking to put her impression on the game. Stretched out wide here for Deanne Rose, tracked by Lee Mengwen. Doing her very best to get a round up. Yeah, I think that's Deanne Rose using her pace and showing us how quick she is. You know, that ball probably should never have been hers, but she, yeah, she's explosive when she gets going. And then great vision from Miki as well. I think she's made a massive difference since she's joining Leicester. She's just been the kind of that, that central position to just really be able to have that vision, spread play really well and make really good decisions on the ball. Here is the Japanese midfielder. Just all the way back with Howard, who just takes a little too long on it. And Brighton might be in with a chance here as Pinto dashes towards goal. Blue shirts flooding back now for Leicester. Sari onto her right. This is Viatriki Sari. Excellent save from Kopp. A crucial save. Now Sophie Howard just stepped on the ball in the heart of the pitch. Lost it from underneath her. And Brighton were on it in a flash, and thankfully, when Sari took the snapshot, Kopp was there to stop it. Yeah, it was a great recovery, wasn't it? And, you know, I think we, we don't expect that from Sophie Howard, to put, you know, it's a, a fluke mistake. Um, but, you know, her teammates, her teammates did her did justice then and just really did well to really recover and to prevent the goal from, and great save from Kopp. Well, you mentioned the misfortune of that Sophie Howard error where well, there was a little bit of misfortune there in the way that when she went in for that tackle just a few seconds ago there were a couple of deflections and then a Leicester player fell on the ball in the form of Josie Green who's still down on the ground and the referee has made a decision I believe in Brighton's favour Green just composing herself she did fall on the ball didn't she and I think it was a, an unfortunate handball but great position for, for Brighton in a central position to potentially get a shot on target well, let's just take a look and you can just see Green there just trying to keep the ball underneath her body and as much as it probably was a foul it's probably quite smart too professional to uh, stop Brighton progressing any further up the pitch Well, this is a fair distance out for Albion and there are candidates at least four players around the ball one of them is Sari Arabali showing an interest as well well it's an indirect free kick which is why the referee has her arm in the air. So this will need to be tipped off to Vicky Losada here if she is going to take a strike. Losada. Oh, Kopp was across quickly. And just about got some fingertips on it. Hard to tell whether it was creeping into the corner, but the goalkeeper didn't want to take any chances. And behind it goes.
Yeah, not a bad effort, was it? It looked like Vicky Lasada just stuttered and hesitated just a little bit as it go. It looked like it was going in the, the bottom. It's a brilliant bottom save, corner, isn't it? it? Yeah, brilliant. Brilliant save from Cop. In comes the resulting corner. Howard there again. Robinson scampers across. Here's Mengwen Lee. Trying to get away from Rose. Enough pressure applied from the Foxes forward. Now City can build from the back again. Here's Alec. Green. She's opened up a bit of space for herself and for teammates here. Josie Green. Tierney is open on this right hand side. Rose is with her. Popped in towards the far post. Rantala collects. Can't feed Mamiki. Who was the option on the edge of the box? I think it's those moments, isn't it, when you, we've seen Leicester, Leicester play so well in so many games. It is just those final moments and, you know, the, the, the decisions on the ball and type of passes that we can that we, that we can play through. But, you know, great, great play that actually started from Josie Green at the back and then cut through the central central areas and, you know, right decisions. And Sam Tierney, great ball across. It's just, again, just the, the final ball. That it's Leicester, so many times this season, just can't seem to get right. can be a source of frustration at times. It's all about staying patient and trusting your quality. And Leicester do have plenty of that on the field. At both ends as well. Some important saves from Kopp in the last five or so minutes. Bagley is also to come up with the goods for her team from a Brighton perspective. Cayman. Headed away by... Mengwen Lee. It's going to drop here for Mamiki inside the centre circle. And Tierney looking to lift it over the top for Rose. Telegraphed by Pattinson. And Pattinson looking to slide Terland in behind. She just set off too early. Great line again from Leicester. You could see that they could see Terland make, going to make the run and they just, they just they're brave enough to then hold the line and yeah, great play, great play from Leicester just to catch Turland off, offside there. Mikey Harris a touch frustrated. Of course, an interim charge at the moment after Mel Phillips' departure from Brighton at the start of February. That was a decision which took a few people by surprise mm -hmm. in the WSL, the departure of Mel Phillips. Yeah, including myself. I didn't I didn't expect it actually for Mar Phillips. Mikey Harris, plenty of experience. Coached in the England setup. Wheeling well, there on Lasada. Has earned Brighton a free kick. Talk about two experienced campaigners going head to head. Ale. Oh, it's a late challenge on Green. It's a yellow card as well for Elizabeth Taylor, who immediately held her hand up in apology. Knew it was a late challenge and probably can't argue too much with the decision. Yeah, she'd already committed, hasn't she? And, you know, she's a player that she wouldn't go do anything maliciously. I think she was just already in her tracks. Uh, and then, uh, you know, Josie Green, I think she moved the ball quicker than she expected. So, yeah, she deserved a yellow card, but nothing malicious with that from Taylor. Well, Josie Green knows a thing or two about yellow cards as well. Five this season for her in the WSL, more than any other Leicester player. I don't think the Norwegian can have too many complaints. Mm 
This is Yuta Rantala for Leicester City. Now Mamiki, just trying to shimmy her way through. Might drop for Rantala, gifted straight back to Brighton. Cayman lifts one in, flipped into the arms of Bagley safely. Yeah, I think it looks like that cross is actually looking for Rose, wasn't it, in the further further back. But, uh, yeah, good win from, from Aileen Whelan. And, yeah, especially when the sun's out, you never know where it's going to go, do you? So, yeah, good chance. Good chance for Leicester. Just need to be probably, again, just a little bit more patient in the final third and trying to, you know, they're trying to create as much and build the game. I think sometimes they're crossing a little bit too early. Bergsvant. Well, it's loose from Masada. Don't say that too often. Rantala. Cayman. Pelganda. Now Howard. Cayman's touch just gets away from her. This is Sari now for Brighton. Masada. Again, another turnover in possession. Smash long by Kopp. It's a really good header from Aileen Whelan. Rantala. Tierney looking to find Whelan. It's an important diversion behind from Bureau Bergsland, which means it's a Leicester corner. I think that's what you get from when Aileen Whelan playing in a central forward position. I think any, anything there really, she would be the one to to you know to aim towards and she did a really great flick on header then and then almost I think Tierney almost found her it's a great intricate ball through just to you know it's like threading the eye of a needle but uh, yeah they've got a really good link whenever they play together on the same pitch Tierney and Alien Whelan and it's good to see them continuing that in this game it's another first half Fox's set piece lifted in by Rantala Bagley comes but it's headed away and that's Pell Gander. And it's just snuffed out by Sari. It's a good touch from Tierney. It's a good recovery challenge from Mengwen Lee as well. Although the foul is given in Leicester's favour for the secondary tackle on Sam Tierney. Yeah, good play, I think. Actually, I think Shara Foster, I don't know whether she would have played kind of advantage if she would have been able to get through then because it looked like Santini was being pulled down earlier than that. But, yeah, good decision from the referee and great play from Santini. And just over ten and a half minutes to go. Until half time, not including stoppages. And it's another Leicester set piece. Momiki delivers. It's dangerous. Headed back across by Howard. Cleared away by Brighton. It's a devilish ball in. Yeah, it was hit with some pace, wasn't it? And then, yes, yeah, Sophie Howard, I think everyone else expected it to go out. And then Sophie Howard was able to, to head it back inside within the within both posts Momiki loses out to Sari no foul says the referee Robinson one side tail and the other Sari still she goes on might she go alone she's thinking about it and her effort deflected for a Brighton corner there's two runners either side of the Atriki Sari maybe just encouraging the Leicester defence to Step off a little. In the end, it's a Howard block that sees it goes behind for a corner. Yeah, I think that's a good break from Brighton, and I think Leicester were patient when to press because obviously, the, as you mentioned, the run, runners on either side. But yeah, good deflection and good block challenge from uh, Sophie Howard there. She reads the game so well. Comes the corner to the far post, lofted away, and at the feet of. Deanne Rose, who's trying to spin her way past the 
challenge of Pattinson. Brighton do eventually regain possession, only to give it straight back to Leicester City. Tierney just shrugs off Tashana Pinto. And Tala not on the same wavelength there. Well, there's Jennifer Foster, the Foxes' assistant. Revealed that Denny Draper missing due to an injury she picked up whilst on international duty with England under-17s. Revealed that in her pre-match press conference. Said that Shannon O'Brien is also not quite ready to return, so both of those players unavailable for Leicester today. And she also mentioned how important that every game is in the next few weeks. Not just this one, not just that upcoming FA Cup semi-final. Yeah, I think this Leicester side, and I think she's she's done. She said the exact right things. I think you know this Leicester side, they want to compete in every single game. You know, they're not here just to make the numbers up. They want to, as we mentioned, they want their best finish in the WSL. So, and to gain momentum through good performances for that semi-final. So every game is absolutely vitally important. Pattinson. This is Tashana Pinto. Losada fizzed into the feet of Bergsvan, who's under some pressure from Whelan. The centre half stepping into midfield. Advantage played by the referee, and now she'll bring it back for the free kick. That's good work from the Norwegian centre half. Yeah, she did well. She she showed really good strength then, didn't she? Trying to, you know, Alien Whelan isn't a, an easy player to shrug off, and, and she did well there, and then has got a, a free kick in a decent position for, for Brighton. But I do I still like the fact that Alien Whelan, she works so hard, you know, when when the team have got the possession and also when the, the team haven't got the ball, she works so hard in there for those defensive what position. That's one thing you can say about this Leicester side, the likes of Whelan and Mamiki as well. So much energy. That energy now needs to be channeled in def into defending this free kick. This time it's Yorlin Karabali who fancies her chances from a long way out. And Pop just wanted to make sure. Beats over the top for a corner. That was a fair distance from goal, mm -hmm. but the Colombian backed her ability. She did. It was hit, hit with some hit with some pace. It was just very central, wasn't it? And you know, dip right at the end. So Cop was able to watch it all the way and then uh, tap it over for for a corner. A fizzing effort from Caravalli. I like the confidence though. Lifted up towards Wheeler. Foul from Carabalic. Arrived from Brazilian side Atletico Mineiro in September last year. Carabelli for Brighton. Yet to score a goal for the Seagulls in the WSL. Would have been some way to open your account. But again, Cop more than equal to it. She has been a couple of times for Leicester in this first half. Chances at both ends. Still goalless, with under five minutes to play until the half-time break. Yeah. 
Well, Smita Ali just clipped late off the ball there. And the referee, to be fair to her, Cheryl Foster just taking some time before making the decision. And gives the free kick Leicester's way. Yeah, Smita Ali, I think she read, the, she read the play really well there. I think when you've got a, a player like Robinson running at you at pace, you just have to judge that ball correctly. And to be honest, she probably prepared herself to be hit with a the challenge there. So, yeah, good call from Cheryl Foster and good play from Asmita Ali. Here's Rose for Leicester. Up against Lee Meng Quen. That's been a good battle so far in this first half. Those two. Going shoulder to shoulder and again there. Whelan. Ali. Well, a goal at any point of any game is always welcome, but right before half-time, as the old cliche goes, is a good time to strike. Can Leicester find a way through before the interval? Rose. Dealt with by Brighton. Gifted straight back to Asmita Ali, and here's Deanne Rose again. Rantala screaming for it. It's at the feet of Tierney. Here is Yuta Rantala who tests Sophie Bagley again. Full of confidence at the moment. Yuta Rantala not afraid to give it a crack. And that time just a little too close to the Brighton goalkeeper. Yeah, she is full of confidence. And how many times have we seen this season kind of that that play of you know, starting the right hand side and then taking the touch inside to then get the shot off. And yeah, we've seen it so many times and it's, you know, it usually leads to Leads to a goal or kind of, you know, a parry from the goalkeeper to be to then be finished by somebody else. But yeah, she's very dangerous on this right hand side, Montala. The WSL has seen a new all-time attendance record set this season across the league. Over 720,000 people have attended games. That smashed the previous record, which was set last season. And we've still got six game weeks to go. So a pretty nice statistic to be able to read out on Women's Football Weekend. The game is growing, and it's clear for all to see. I think it's definitely going in the right direction, isn't it? And you know, as long as, as long as, as we see progression, I think it's great. You know that, that teams are now playing within bigger stadiums, which allow bigger crowds, and and actually they so they're, they're able to cater for the bigger crowds as well. So actually, you know, the game that you know the spectators won't outgrow the kind of the the size of stadiums, and we need to just keep that momentum going because it's a great it's a great day out, isn't it? You know, when you come and watch when you come and watch a game, it's a great family feel, family environment. But as I mentioned earlier, every game is competitive. That's tidy from Carabelli, who's under some pressure. Right and staying calm and composed in what could have been a tricky situation. Howard forward, headed down only as far as Rantala, Whelan on for Mamiki, and now this is Rose for Leicester, it's Deanne Rose and flashes right across the face of goal. Well Leicester City may have well saved their best chance to the very end of the first half. 
It's as close as they've come. Deflection just takes it wide of Bagley's goal. Rantala delivers. Bagley claims well. Good goalkeeping from the former Manchester United stopper. Might just have taken a knock for her troubles as well. Yeah, it was a great play, wasn't it? From And, you know, Diane Rose, she did the one thing that she could do, really, uh, by hitting it kind of across goal. She did everything right. And, yeah, really unfortunate not to get that finish there. Well, that's it for the first 45 minutes here in the WSL. Leicester City and Brighton, nothing to split them at the moment, but chances at either end. Sari drawing a couple of saves out of Lisa Kopp. While Sophie Bagley has also been called into action on a couple of occasions. Deanne Rose going close at the end of that first half. Yuta Rantala has looked involved, but so far no goals to speak of. Half time here at King Power Stadium. Leicester City nil, Brighton and Hove Albion nil. Who wants to join me? Shopping at King Power. Three day, two night stay book. See ya. To the rooftop bar. To snap a photo from my IG. To eat the famous for The new collection is calling me. Sure, there's a perfume I want. Let me ask my sis. Yes, of course I'm going. Let's start city. Fox never quit. Let's go. It's possible because King Power is more than just duty free. Shop latest trends in beauty and gadgets. Your coolest staycation. The legendary Pad Thai, best street food in town. A place to support your team. A fancy dinner. Enjoy shopping at downtown stores and online. Or even the thrill of a new experience. Explore your everyday possibilities. The power of possibilities. King Power. This is Fox's Hub. A brand new place for the Blue Army to follow the Foxes this season. So whether you're listening in on the outside and finds a way through or watching live, make sure you don't miss a moment. Lamia is the belief that perfection lies within the details, where the finest ingredients deserve the finest craftsmanship. In every pursuit of perfection, there is passion and perseverance, where attention to detail inspires a masterpiece that's balanced and in harmony. This is the Lamia philosophy brewed into every drop of Chang beer. This is the taste of Thai perfection. Chang beer. We brew friendship. Our lives move quickly. They're journeys of many choices. Journeys within which we each take our own turns for our own reasons. Trading is no different. Doing your thing, showing off your skills, changing the result for yourself. It's easy when you know how. With its financial services, FBS makes trading simple from anywhere on any device, putting knowledge and tools in your hands so that whether you have a lot of time or only a little, and whether you're doing it just for yourself today or for someone else's tomorrow, your ability will shine through. Wherever you want your trading journey to take you, it begins with FBS. FBS. Make your own way. It's possible to be, to go, to get, to be, to go, to get.
dining, traveling, shopping, chilling, vacationing, cheering. Everything is possible every day. The power of possibilities. King Power. Dollars at the break between Leicester City and Brighton and Hove Albion in WSL. Carries Harrop still with us here at half time. Uh, an entertaining half uh, and one that was quite interesting to watch tactically, I suppose. It was, yeah, although it's nil nil, the uh, performance certainly doesn't reflect it. It was a, a boring nil nil. Lots of chances, mm. both teams had good chances. I think overall Leicester's possession has been better. They're playing the nicer football, but as I mentioned before the game, Brighton are coming out on the counter attack. You know, with Leicester obviously pushing players on, certainly as Meter Ali down the left side has been bombing on. It's a risky take, but there's also the vulnerability as well. And a couple of times Leicester have been caught out on that counter attack, which we, we kind of knew might happen um, at the start of the game. Yeah, that transition, uh, as Jen Foster told us before the game, as we as we talked about, has led to most of Brighton's chances. That's where they've they've managed to to get a lot of joy. Yeah, down the sides especially. Um, Sarri's gotten it a couple of times. Katie Robertson whipped in that one cross and it found Sarri at the back post. And Leicester were fortunate that she skied it over. I think the one where Sophie Harold was on it, fortunately had a slip and then Josie Green did excellently to get back. So definitely something I think Jenny Foster will be talking to the team at half-time about. Just to secure up a little bit at the back, make sure there's not no one's left in a 1v1 situation. That Leicester can try and outnumber Brighton at the back to, to prevent the counter. Brighton did have a very early chance as I think we're about to, uh, to, to see here and as we were saying it came from those transitions they're getting the, the, the attacking players high and we were screaming at this way back post back post yeah we were I think Kate Robinson should have put in a better ball there Sai was uh, at the back but it still fell in the end but you know Leicester here just need to make sure they're not not ball watching you know they've been certainly in previous seasons when I've played against them they're guilty of that ball watching and not being aware of the back shoulder and just forge it there that sorry was leaning back a little bit and and she kind of put it off off target yeah just kind of sort of got under it i suppose but uh, that was one of a, a couple of chances that, that brighton has had when leicester have had a lot of the ball and when they've created things as we kind of expected a lot of it has come through yuta rantala yeah no she's been brilliant i've been really impressed with her she had a good chance so she's cutting on the right side and and, and had a shot with her left foot and yeah, I think she's brilliant. I didn't actually know what foot she was at first, but she's obviously I mean, both. It's incredible. I think, I think, she, I think she's, she's taking corners with both feet. Yes, it's, it's, corners it's with incredible. both feet. Um, um, but yeah, she's certainly a danger player um, for Leicester, which we spoke about at the beginning of the game. But here's her chance. So she's kind of held it up and then cut in on that left foot. Got a great effort off. It's a good save there by Sophie Bagley to, to put it over. And these are the, the moments, really, where Leicester have had the most joy when they've got the, the, the ball wide. And that seems to be where a lot of the, the joy against this Brighton back line has come from. Yeah, I think Brighton as well have also been a bit guilty of, of ball watching and not being aware of the back shoulder just before the half. You know, Deanna Rose has had a really good chance and that's because the, the right back hasn't been aware of her. So I think the more that Leicester can keep getting Rose and Rantala on the ball, I think that's where they'll keep creating chances. Now at the other end, Lisa Carp has made some really, really good saves. In particular, there's a couple of long range free kicks as well that we were both watching thinking, quite ambitious but my goodness they made uh, they made her work for, for her money yeah no she's been a few set pieces I think that's where Brighton have looked dangerous as well as on the counter like we can see here with the uh, effort here again Josie's done brilliantly to get back Pinto's got on it and she's found Sari she's cutting on her right side and again great save down to her near side there and you know I think Leicester they've got some great goalkeepers and Leipzig cop coming in and she's done really well since she, she's come into the team and She's made some really crucial saves to, to make sure that Leicester are staying in the game. It's a good strong hand down to her right to make it, you know, not go back into the danger area as well. Yep. Uh, this again, is the free yeah, kick we were talking about. Well. Good strike from the side. I think again, she's just got a slight touch on it just to guide it past. But yeah, great save down by her right side. I think it was quite difficult because the wall potentially could have been in the way. She saw it late, but yeah, yeah it would have been good. She does it wide. Yeah, That's a really good wide. save. So crucial save. And here again is the... More long distance one from Carabali, but again, does well to just touch it over and ultimately she's kept it uh, lesser in the game. Is that something at, at, at half time that, that Jen Foster might be saying to the players? Look, we, we've had a lot of the ball, we've created a lot. The final ball again might have been, be an issue. Just be wary of these transitions and how Brighton are getting in. 
Yeah, I think doing their analysis before the game, they would definitely have known that Brighton are good on the counter, but also the set pieces. I think in general play, you know, Brighton won't break them down. Leicester are set, they're organised, and they're, you know, Jenny has got, has got them set defensively. So I think it's just limiting these silly free kicks and corners that they're giving away. And as long as they can secure it at the back and make sure the counter isn't on, then you know, Leicester should go on and win the game. And as we were coming down here, right before half time, they very nearly went in a goal up. This is maybe the one time where they've got a, a clear shot at goal from Deanne Rose. Yeah, but Miki's done really well. She's finding real good pockets. It's a nice pace of pass there. I think it's took a little deflection actually, which has helped Deanna Rose to get it across and a bit of a tight angle. But again, you know, she's the kind of player when you give her a bit of time and space, she can get shots off. It's just fortunate it didn't just creep in at that far side. And Mamiki there with a, she, we've been really impressed with her as well in midfield. So calm, technically adept, moving the ball left and right. Yeah, the, the Japanese players, they're always like that. They're renowned for being technically very gifted on the ball. And I've been really impressed with her. She's got a great left foot. She's spraying passes out, certainly to Rantala on this this right-hand side. And she's kind of the, the playmaker. She gets the, the attack started. And I think, I'd like to see her actually take a shot. She's getting into some nice positions there in and around the edge of the box. So it'd be nice, you know, to see her get a, get a shot off and, and test Sophie Bagley a bit more from distance. We'll see if that happens uh, in the second half. It's goalless uh, at the moment, but uh, for International Women's Day, we gathered together three women with connections to Leicester. So you can see the full feature on Fox's Hub and on the Leicester City YouTube channel. But for now, here is a little teaser. By three fantastic guests to chat all about their really exciting careers. I have three brothers, yeah. I missed all three weddings. So. Did you? Yeah, the last one was alright because we won Champions League that day. I was able to go to the World Championships in 2019 and win three golds in all three of my races. I managed to have my whole family there watching, and, and that was something that I kind of dreamt of as a little kid. I grew up at that tennis club. You asked me as well, how long do you think you still play? And I'm like, I don't know. So for me, I've always thought that you have to be able to see it to be it. Hello and welcome to our round table. My name is Fern Whelan and I'm going to be your host today. I'm joined by three fantastic guests to chat all about their really exciting careers. So next to me here is Katie Bolter, current British number one for tennis and Tully Kearney, Olympic gold medalist and world record holder in para swimming and Janice Kamen, two time Champions League winner and over 100 caps for Belgium. So thank you for joining me today, girls. Thanks for having us. I think we'll just get started um, with you guys being obviously elite in your sport. Was it always the dream? Um, and when did it feel like the dream was going to become a reality for you? I'll open it to the floor so that wants to jump in first. I mean, for me, it was when I had time away from the sport. I think that's when I realised that I absolutely love this sport and I want to continue playing and be a part of it. So when I was 17 or 18 year years old, I had one year where I was sick and uh, I came back from that and uh, I was ready to go and more energised and I've I've kept it and not left it since. Fantastic. Um, yeah, for me, as a little girl playing football, didn't really see a future because there was nothing on TV about women's football. Um, and I always played with the boys, so mm -hmm. no idea. And then I think just gradually when you grow up and you go from one team to another team, that's always a step higher. I think that's just how it grew for me. And you, Tully? So for me, swimming was the only sport that I was actually physically able to do. Um, I couldn't do things like running and playing football like my brother could. Uh, and when I got in the pool, I just felt completely free. It was the only sport I didn't feel disabled, like I was treated like everyone else, and I could get on with it without help. So really, like my love for it just became there, and it became like my coping mechanism. Um, with like if I was struggling with my disability, I'd go in the pool, and it would all like melt away. Um, and at that point, I didn't think about becoming a Paralympian. I didn't even realise that I could be classified um, until a few years later. And then it wasn't really until I was like 17, 18 that I realised that, you know, potentially I could go to the Paralympic Games. Well, there is CJ Bott. Potential change in the offing for Leicester City. New Zealand international who did start the last game against Tottenham seven days ago in the WSL to start from the bench today but looks like Chloe that she's going to get an opportunity yeah to be honest she she was one of my uh, players of the season for Leicester so far so I was uh, quite surprised that she 
she didn't start today in the fullback position, and so I'm not surprised that she's coming on with her quality. You know, she's an international player, and actually, she I think what this Leicester City team need, and we were talking about it off air, that you know they need to create more in the in the final third, and she's a player that actually she can get up and down that line, she can put quality crosses into the box, and I think that's probably what they've missed. Uh, in the first half so she'll make a big a big difference in that sense I think we mentioned didn't we in the first 45 minutes that maybe that final pass has just been a little bit lacking as you say and perhaps Bot is someone who can provide that so we're just waiting for the Brighton team to re-emerge from the tunnel for the start of the second half what do you think some of the messages would have been in the dressing room at half time uh, for, for either side, I think for Leicester, I think their the performance overall, I think they're they're kind of the, the control in the game, they're managing the tempo uh, of the game. I think they just need to kind of be a little bit more ruthless and, and clinical uh, in the in the final third. And you know they've they've had they've had some shots. I think it's just getting into making those better decisions uh, when they get to towards the kind of the, the final third and the attacking third. But they've been, they've done good, good build up play. And I think for Brighton, I think. They need to, to raise the standards, uh, to be honest, the, the basics. I think the turnover has been quite high for, for Brighton. They haven't managed to control the ball um, enough. Uh, you know, and with the quality players that, that they've got, I think, you know, the likes of Vicky Lasada, they really need to get hold of this game now if they want to get anything from it. Uh, but I think for them, yeah, it's, it's more kind of getting the basics right, to be honest. Just confirmation then that CJ Bott is on. And she replaces Asmita Ali who had only played one minute in the WSL for the Foxes this season. That was as a substitute against Bristol City before today. Made her full debut from the start this afternoon, but CJ Bott given the nod for the second 45. And now those Brighton players do re-emerge. Out onto the King Power Stadium pitch. So we're almost ready to get back underway. We know the quality that Asmita Ali has. I guess it's just been a case of maybe just getting her up to speed and getting her used to things. Yeah, definitely. You know, she had a, she had a good first half. I think she defended really well, and I think when she whenever she was on the ball, she made good decisions and managed to to keep the ball for her side. Uh, and as you mentioned, it's you know having those. Uh, multiple options uh, for each for each of the positions and you know she's deserved her, her start today and she's had a good 45 minutes so it's not a negative thing that she's been taken off she's performed positively for that first half uh, and then obviously bringing on the more experienced uh, CJ Bart but uh, Asmita should be should be pleased with the performance that she put in for the first half no changes for Brighton for the start of the second half and we are back underway here King Power Stadium, goalless first half, but not without its chances. We saw some good saves from both goalkeepers, Bagley and Lisa Cop. And could there be an early chance here for Brighton and Hove Albion? There would have been, but for the offside flag on this near side, Tailand once again just triggering a run a little too soon. Yeah, again, really good line from Leicester. And um, telling you know, with her pace, she doesn't need to to go too early. Um, and she's done that a few times now, which I'm sure that will frustrate her. And that's exactly what Leicester City will want. Rose we had a good chance right at the end of the first half. Yeah, she did great chance, wasn't it? That's probably the the best chance of the game. Really, really good build up from from Leicester and a great uh, pass down the left side channel for to, for Dion Rose to, to take the shot off first time and yeah just went across goal but yeah deflection stopped her from from scoring that goal. Tierney and now Yuta Rentala left or right take your pick doesn't matter which foot for her Tierney clipped in towards goal by young Amelia Helgander who only turned 20 at the start of the month given a start today against Brighton hasn't really linked up with the attack too much in this game so far but was latching onto that mm -hmm. effort there yeah I think first half I think she did the defensive duties really well she broke up play 
Um, but actually, you know, we want to. We know her capabilities, and she can, as you mentioned, link the attack. And I think she hasn't got as far as far forward as she would have liked to uh, in the first half. But you look at how the setup at the moment. I think Leicester are really trying to go for it now, aren't they? They're trying to press a little bit higher. So the midfield, I'm sure, will be further up the pitch now. Well, you could tell there, by the way, Howard just darted in front of Elizabeth Taylor and wins a free kick for her team as well. Plenty of blue shirts forward for Leicester City, who have a really good recent record against Brighton. It has to be said, unbeaten in the last three games, a double over the Seagulls in the WSL last season. The game here at King Power Stadium finished 3-0 in the Foxes' favour. So recent form belongs to Leicester. But on the balance of the opening 45 minutes, I think separating the sides. Yeah, I think as much as recent form goes in Leicester's favour, I think that's even more motivation, isn't it, for Brighton to change that. Here's Terlin for Brighton and Hove Albion. Now Lee Mainwang, what a challenge from Deanne Rose. And it's deflected over the top. It'll be a goal kick. And we talk about Deanne Rose and her pace going forward and her capabilities in front of goal at one end. Well, what about that at the other? That was a crucial block. Yeah, it had to be timed to perfection, didn't it? I think anything in the box, it has to be absolutely perfect. Uh, and, you know, that absolutely was. She did her defensive duties following in. And I think it's it's vital actually when attacking players, you know, when you've got your runners. And yeah, she just managed to just get a get a leg in front of the ball, didn't she? Brilliant challenge on Lee Memwen. Rantala. This is Mamiki. Mamiki for Leicester. Brilliant save, Bagalik. Well, she has been at the heart of everything that Leicester have done going forward today. Yuka Momiki nearly found the corner, but for Bagley. Yeah, that's the sign of her quality, isn't it? Look at, you know, look at the technique of that strike. And I wasn't sure whether she was going to play it down the left-hand side, but great decision to to take the shot off. And yeah, great, you know, it, drew, it drew a great save from Bagley. Helgander delivers. Howard rises. Got back in towards the penalty area by Josie Green, but too long. And Brighton can just breathe a sigh of relief. Well, Sophie Bagley, a former Manchester United goalkeeper, was never going to be easy getting opportunities when you're competing with Mary Earp. She can understand why she moved on. Certainly plenty of quality there. And that was on display with that save. Yeah, she's very experienced, but yeah, you know, I think she had to be at her absolute best to be able to pull off that save then from Mamiki. Flipped around the corner by Whelan. Here's Tierney. Rantala opens up and looking for the angle. Just a little unfortunate, I think. Struck the back of Aileen Whelan. It's dropped kindly for Bagley. Well, as you say, well, you can tell that Leicester have come out with that increased aggression. Yeah, they have. And I think if you look at kind of uh, what, Je what Jennifer would have said at half-time, I think uh, she would have been pleased with the performance, other, but not so pleased with the scoreline. And I think that will be the, the most important thing for, for this half. Because as we know, games, you can play as, as well as you can. But unless you score the goals and, and the scoreline is in your favour, then it doesn't count. Li Meng Wen. Collected by Cayman. Mamiki. Rose pinches it back for Leicester. Meng Wen sliding in and giving away a free kick. Yeah, you mentioned it earlier. It has been a good battle, hasn't it, on this left-hand side? Uh, Dan Rose and, and, and uh, obviously the, the Brighton fullback uh, here. 
I think, you know, both have been attacking, both have been defending and really working hard. It's been a real, real tough 1v1 battle. Uh, Lee Meng Wen was on loan at PSG last season. Played in the Champions League quarterfinals against Wolfsburg. Her dad was a long distance athlete. So, that elite sporting environment mm. runs in the family. And that's why she's a fullback then, plenty of running down this side. <laughs> Carabelli loses out. This is Rose. CJ Box. Off the bench for Leicester. Now Yuta Antala. Oh, trying to find the angle to cross. Knocked on towards Rantala by Tierney. Who's continued her run into the box. Here is Tierney. Trying to get around the corner. And around Carabelli. But wins the corner. This is good stuff from Leicester. Yeah, really good stuff. And I think on that right-hand side I mentioned earlier about CJ Bart, now they've got this um, over overlapping fullback now in that position, which gives uh, obviously more options down that right-hand side. In comes the delivery. Helganda. She'll be disappointed with that. Sometimes when they bounce out to you like that, you can't help yourself. No, she had to get the shot off, but the yeah, uh, I mean that happens in whatever level of football, doesn't it? You know, it's either going to be you can you know you can see it, uh, you've got visions of it going in the top corner, and then yeah, just misjudged, and you get underneath it. I've done that too many times to count. <laughs> Picked up by Mamiki, trying to dance away inside. This is Mamiki, driven across towards that back post. And smashed into the roof of the net by Yuta Antala. Leicester have come out in this second half, on the front foot and with aggression. And he's paid dividends once again, Yuta Antala on the score sheet for the Foxes. Mamiki made it. And Rantalo rattled it in. Leicester won. Brighton nil. Yeah, I think the credit will go to Rantalo, won't it? But actually, Mamiki absolutely made that goal when she fizzed it out to that right-hand side. And, you know, it was just asking for Rantalo just to take a touch out of her feet. And, yeah, she drove that across. And that's the first time, actually, she's shot all day with her left foot, hasn't she, Rantalo? And the first time she almost went on the outside. And what a great finish from, you know, a tight angle after the first touch. Yeah, brilliant finish there from Rantala, but yeah, excellent play from Amik, and I think she's been outstanding all game uh, so far. And Both could, players have. You could feel and see the release of emotion mm -hmm. as everyone charged over to that far side. Maybe a source of frustration that Leicester weren't able to find a goal in the first half, or they've got one now. Yuta Rantala with her sixth WSL goal of the season. Leicester's top scorer is at it again. It's a really good finish from the fin. Uh, almost started as she meant to go on when she arrived at Leicester City. Yuta Rantala, two goals and an assist on her debut from the bench. At the start of the season, two goals in an FA Cup quarter final, a goal today. Absolutely flying at the moment. Robinson to spin away into the box. Well, as much as Leicester have just taken the lead, they won't have forgotten the saves that Lisa Koff has had to make in this game so far. And called into action again there. Yeah, she's having a good game, isn't she, Cop? And she's straight out to everything. Robinson delivers. Well, he's set for another corner. Well, 
couple of changes in the offing for Mikey Harris and his Brighton side. Pachana Pinto is one of those players to make way. Madison Haley, who started the last game, is being brought on, and Gunmin Lee is also going to come on. She scored against former club Manchester City last week. Talk about forward players with guts and energy. Two of them coming on now. Mikey Harris making attacking changes. Haley and Lee on to replace Pinto and Sari. In comes that Brighton corner. Scratched away by Leicester. Pattinson. Yeah, I think they're two both experienced in the strong players coming on, aren't they? And for, for Brighton, I think Leicester just need to, you know, I think when we look at kind of goals conceded, I think Leicester just need to keep it keep it tight at the moment, be really disciplined in what they do, um, because obviously these next five minutes are really key for the game. So first time cross, Robinson's in there, so too is Kopp, excellent goalkeeping again. Well, Leicester won't have forgotten the reverse fixture just before Christmas, where they were two goals in front, and Brighton rallied to eke out a 2-2 draw. They'll be hoping that there isn't a repeat of that this time around. Howard, round the corner from Wheeler. Tierney looking to find Rantala. Might still reach up. Closed down by Carabali. One back well though. And here's Mamiki once more. Rose trying to find that favoured right foot. Again in a shoulder to shoulder battle with Li Meng Wen. Advantage played by the referee. Mamiki. Swung in by Rose and flicked behind for a corner by Carabelli. I think for Leicester they've had quite a few corners, haven't they, um, so far? And they haven't quite kind of made made many opportunities from these. So, uh, you know, it'd be great to see at some point if Leicester just tried something different, maybe kind of went short for a few corners, just try something different, try to draw Brighton out of that central area. Just when you think of the amount of set pieces and corners, as you say, that Leicester have had, We've just seen Lena Peterman being prepared to come on for Leicester City. She will offer that physical presence. Swung in towards the six yard line. Bounces kindly for Robinson. This is Gunmin Lee. It's a pass that finds the space. Bot comes charging across. Alexander is up there and Bot recovers. Yeah, Bot did really well. Just unfortunate to just run out, didn't it? And I think it ran out for a corner. Just committed herself to challenging Bergsvan, who had the run on her, but excellent recovery from the substitute for Leicester. Now it's Brighton's turn for a set piece with this corner kick. Oh, it's deflected. It's awkward and it's an equaliser. But the whistle has gone. Or has it? No, it will stand. It will stand. Questions from a Leicester perspective and you can hear what the crowd think about a foul on Liza Kopp. It's Madison Haley freshly on as a substitute for Brighton who's 
restored parity, but it took a wicked deflection, an awkward deflection. And Hayley Rose, along with Kopu, tried to grab it out of the air. And in the end, she's on the deck and the ball's in the net and it's 1-1. I think that's a that's a difficult one, isn't it? I spoke about the you know the five minutes after scoring a goal for Leicester, and you know you've seen you've seen those given in the favour of the goalkeeper, and you've also seen seen goals given. So I think a difficult one, but it was definite 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 contact there, wasn't there? Don't envy the referee Cheryl Foster, but certainly Leicester supporters inside King Power Stadium weren't too impressed. And we'll have a couple of changes as well for the Foxes. Deanne Rose is withdrawn, as is Aileen Whelan. And Missy Goodwin is on. And Lena Peterman is also introduced. Well, two forward players. Switched up for two forward players. Rose with a big chance at the end of the first half and Whelan has run her heart out as you'd expect. Well, yeah. tensions rising out there, Chloe, aren't they? Yeah, definitely. You can you can tell, can't you? And you know, it's been a competitive game since the first minute, but now I think absolutely the temperatures have have risen. You know, and I think uh, I think that will that will continue for the rest of the game. Now it's a highly competitive game, which is what we want. And you know, this game could go either way. And then Mickey Losada just had her name taken by the referee, so she's in the book. This is White. Just a little too much on the Miki. So a couple of fouls in there. But it is Losada, the Brighton captain, who has been shown the yellow card. And now this is a chance for Leicester to try and regain their lead. Dropped into the box by Mamiki. It's devilish. It's all the way through. It's not a bad ball when it went when it went through. You it was just asking for a touch from a Leicester City player, but it, it seemed like the Leicester City players just didn't commit themselves enough for that. It may be again these next five minutes are really vital, aren't they, for for both teams of who's going to finish on top? Leicester taking the lead through Uta Rantala on 55 minutes, and just seven minutes later, Brighton level. Controversially through Madison Haley. Question marks over whether the goalkeeper Lisa Kopp was fouled as the ball found its way in. It was a horrible deflection that it took from the corner. But we're back as we were, level at the break and 1 1 now. Forward from Howard. Headed out firmly by Bergsfand. Pelganda. Green. Bot. Here's Tierney. And she's gone to ground now. true Sam Tierney fashion when she's down she's not down for long no she's not she gets straight back up doesn't she I'm, I'm surprised that actually a free kick wasn't given they look like there's contact after she tried to play the ball Losada Min Lee it's a tidy turn CJ Bont excellently recovering stepping in front of the Korean but it's found its way back to Brighton and Hove Albion. One back again by Leicester. Rantala smashed up towards Peterman, who can't control it. Peterman 
Nottingham providing that central focal point now for Leicester. And they are on the attack. I think Cheryl Foster, I think she's, she's absolutely strong enough to manage, manage these situations. And you can see now she's having conversations with players and, you know, saying no more. Well, there has been lots of talk this season about more officials who have played the game to a level coming through the ranks. It does give a different perspective on proceedings. Cox come out here and she's committed herself and Brighton have taken the lead. Katie Robinson punishing Fox's sloppiness at the back. And in the blink of an eye, the visitors have turned it around. Katie Robinson around Cott and rolling into the empty net. Yeah, I think I spoke about Cott all game, actually saying how, how much of a great game she's had and how she's, you know, made some great saves for her team so far. And yeah, I think that was the wrong decision then to, to come out. I think it was misjudged, wasn't it? When the ball got played through and initially kind of, you know, the quality that Cott's got to be able to deliver the ball, she... She gave it away too easily and, yeah, good finish from uh, from Katie Robinson and you'd expect that from her, as we mentioned earlier, you know, current Lioness and she's been in many squads recently but, yeah, you know, I think it's for Leicester, they need to really pick themselves up for these last 20-odd 20, 20 minutes. So third WSL goal of the season for Katie Robinson. That's a blow for Leicester. to come from behind they certainly have the quality to do so yeah they absolutely do and I think you know all game Leicester have been on top and I think they just look a bit rattled at the moment but absolutely Brighton have, have picked up their intensity they've got closer to Leicester they haven't given them a second you know, to take a touch, and yes, they're giving a, you know, they're giving away fouls. They're very aggressive in what they do, but it seems to be working for Brighton. And Leicester need to need to get hold of this game. Suppose that's one of the pitfalls when you do apply a more aggressive press, leave a few more gaps, leave yourself a little bit more open at the back. And Brighton punishing the Foxes on that occasion. Through Katie Robinson. I, think I was actually surprised when, uh, unless it was due to injury, for Aileen Whelan coming off, I expected her to be dropped maybe into a more attacking midfielder role uh, for the rest of the game. So I thought she was, she was creating so much for Leicester, and she's a very, really real focal point. Um, so actually, I was, I was surprised with uh, that change, actually. Well, we're likely to see some more alterations as well from a Leicester perspective. As they wrestle to get themselves back on level terms. Well, enough chances in the first half for a goal fest. There weren't any. But second half, three goals in just 13 minutes. It's this game which has gone this way and that in the WSL. Currently reads Brighton 2, Leicester 1. Momentum with the visitors. Tidy stuff from... Yumin Lee is the Brighton goal scorer. Robinson. Looking to find talent. The vision was there. Execution not quite. kick eventually given for the foul on Sam Tierney.
Well, Kim Min Lee is going to get a yellow card here, and it's a needless yellow card for the South Korean as well. She stood right in San Tierney's way. Tierney just played the ball against her, and Lee gets the yellow. Well, here is that aforementioned Mr. Chen. Pell Gander. Just the second start for her in the league this season. And it's replaced by Takarada, who's immediately into the action. Towards the back post. Headed away and collected by Momiki. Smashed forward, but Straight against Robinson. Came on with the switch. Tierney. Oh, a couple of nibbles there from Carabao. And Tierney asking the question of both the referee and the assistant. Nothing doing, say the match officials. Yeah, you could see what she, she wanted. And uh, yeah, I think there was definite contact, but I think it was more of a 50-50 a than anything. Here's Bott. Poked out for a throw. A oh, penalty. Will have been a rare thing had the referee given one. Leicester haven't had one in the league all season. A spot kick. And now we have another stoppage for another substitution. And Vicky Losada is the player who's going to come off. Lindsay Simons just preparing herself to be introduced to the fold. And a 21 year old. Well, she'll feel confident coming on. The Brighton midfielder, her first WSL goal was again. Leicester, an injury time winner as well in November 2021. Leicester searching for that equaliser. It's a well timed tackle, and it had to be. Yeah, I wasn't sure whether there was going to be contact then on Sam Tierney, uh, but yeah, it turned out to be a really, really well timed tackle from Brighton. Heads rise, one of them is Howard who goes over. All still bobbling around in there, smashed by Saori Takarada. And smashed once again by CJ Bott, but this time out of play. Just doesn't seem to be falling in the right areas for Leicester City at the moment. That can be really frustrating as a side when you know you're doing the right things and getting into the right areas, and then the ball just doesn't bounce your way. Yeah, definitely. And you can tell that they they feel a little bit frustrated at the moment. And I think it's, you know, because look at the performance that they, they put in first half and they just didn't convert any of the chances. And, you know, sometimes they, they, they bite you uh, after and it, hopefully it won't. Robinson, who's in on goal again for Brighton. And even though she slots into the corner, it won't stand because the flag is up for offside. I think that might have been a different story if she'd left it for Turland, but I think, uh, yeah, Katie Robinson, she was in an offside position there. Well, Leicester's ambition this season in the WSL was to improve on last season's league position where they finished level on points with Brighton. But the Seagulls can go above the Foxes in the table today. If the score stays as it is. And while it's another yellow card of Brighton persuasion. He's been kept busy today. The referee, Cheryl Foster.
Botts delivery deflected. Recycled back into the penalty area. Opportunity might present itself here. Good win. Towards the back post. Breaks for Tierney. Bot can try and deliver. Find the way ahead of Uterantala. Hooked on by Bot. Headed inside towards Takarada. Ball's already gone over the line. Yeah, I think this is where Brighton will just take the time for everything, won't they? Any set piece, any time the ball goes out of play, I think they will absolutely take their time and try and manage this game as, as well as possible. Howard stepping in. Important intervention. Cayman. Takarada. Seeking to slide in. Peterman. Rantala. Fighting to keep the move alive. Neither side can get a hold of the ball at the moment. Hammered clear by Bergsfeld. Well, there's 11 and a half minutes to go, plus stoppage time. Enough time for more than one goal on the basis of what we've seen in this second half. Three goals in just 13 minutes. Swept out to Goodwin. It's an excellent touch. Cayman. Oh, she fancied it. And you can't blame her. Didn't get the connection she was hoping for. Bagley watches it sail over the crossbar. It opened up really well, didn't it, for, for Cayman, and that's the highest she's been up the pitch um, all game. And I think, uh, I think Br Brighton now, I think they will just sit in, they'll try and get bodies behind the ball. And Leicester, you know, great play from, from Antala to switch the play, though, in that. And that's what they need to do. They need to move the ball a little bit quicker, Leicester, in order to create something. Well, speaking of creation, Remy Simpson is on. It looks like, I think Santini's just been given a piece of paper, so it looks like a little bit of a tactical change from, from Leicester. Let's see what it does to the formation. Well, Josie Green was the player to come off, so offensive player for a more attack-minded player. Yeah, it's looking more like a, a three at the back now, isn't it? And time is against the Foxes. But patience might be the key. Keeping it tight is also the key. As Brighton will want to try and punish Leicester and put the result beyond reasonable doubt. Brighton may have lost four of the last five games, but they have been against some of the toughest teams in the WSL, the likes of Liverpool and Manchester United and Manchester City. And Mikey Harris, their interim boss, says that the performances have been pleasing, but the results haven't quite been there. Well, in terms of today's showing, it might even be the reverse of that. They've not been at their best, Brighton, but they've found a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, second half they've been stronger, haven't they? I think first half... I think Mikey Harris and the team themselves would have been uh, disappointed with their performance, but second half they've come out and they, they, they look like a different team. I also think the changes have, have made a massive difference. I think especially the likes of Haley. I think she's she's come on and uh, and I think she's made a massive difference. I think she's been a lot more aggressive um, in the central areas and she's broke up, broke up play and she's really led the line well so far. Howard. CJ Bott. The target was Peterman. It's back here with the New Zealander. Takarada and Namiki, the two 
Japanese players desperately hunting to win the ball back. Must have done so through Tierney. Jim Min Lee slides in for Brighton. Bot is there again. It breaks for the Korean. Tailand on the turn. Here's Haley, scorer of Brighton's first goal. Smashes it into the face of her teammate. Gives Goodwin the chance to reclaim possession for the home side. Takarada. Tierney. That's a tidy pass. Opportunity with Peterman in the middle here. And Goodwin was arriving at the far post. He was just stretching and couldn't stretch far enough to divert it forwards. Yeah, I think she went with the wrong foot, didn't she, in the end? She almost went with the outside of a right where you just needed to cushion it back with a left foot then. Great ball across. Well, Peterman, the natural target in the centre. Goodwin can offer something coming in round the back post. Very nearly did there. Came up. Goodwin. The Belgian. Here's Cal. It's Bont. Fizzed into the feet of Tierney. Poked towards Takarada. Peterman, she's in. And he scored. Leicester have their level up. And Lena Peterman is the one to provide it. In this game, which has swung back and forth, it's now Leicester City who are celebrating, and there's still time to grab another excellent pass from Takarada. And Peterman was not going to pass up the opportunity. 2 2. Yeah, I think when you've got Mamiki and Takarada in central areas, I think uh, they're the only ones on the pitch that would have, would have spotted uh, that ball. And what a great finish that is! Uh, what a great, great run! And you know, all the pressure on that, that finish and just slots it into the into the corner. I mentioned the pendulum swing. Strange how the momentum can shift in a game of football. And it's certainly not dead yet, it feels, because Brighton are on the move now. Here's Casey Robinson, lofted in towards Haley. And Brighton are back in front again. In the blink of an eye, Elizabeth Turlin just smashed into the back of the net. And Leicester's lead lasted barely a minute, or Leicester's leveller, I should say, lasted barely a minute before Brighton retake the lead. It's a great finish from Elizabeth Turland. It is a superb finish, isn't it? And Turland, she's, you know, she's been prolific all season for, for Brighton. She's been their real focal point. I mentioned Hayley Earl and her impact of coming on, and she turned the, to, to the, the provider then. And, you know, when it drops there, you can't give in that time and space to be able to get that shot off and a yeah, great finish from them and you know devastating for Leicester and you can see they're set up now ready to go forward again it's it is going back and forth and the game's been very different in the second half than it was the first half well Peter placed her chance into the corner with conviction and Elizabeth Taylor with her 12th WSL goal of the season. Just thundering Brighton back in front. Yeah, she's been quiet all game, hasn't she? And actually, she's been, she's frustrated. She's, uh, you could tell that she was getting frustrated with being offside a few times, but less have been able to keep her quiet all game until then. All of the action has arrived in the second half. Five goals so far. Brighton with the upper hand. Leicester with the possession. Flipped into the channel for Goodwin. 
Just too long for her. And we speak about how important Taylor has been for Brighton this season and how she's been quiet today. She scored more than 50% of Brighton's league goals this season on her own. I think good strike, I think good or good forward players who say they only need a split second to be able to change the game, make their impact on the game. She absolutely has done there. And here she is again, the Norwegian centre forward. That is there ahead of Lee. It's a tidy touch and again, Peterman the target for searching pass forward. Brighton play their way in the traffic. Tierney. No foul, says the referee. And actually, the whistle goes in Leicester's favour. Is there one more chance in the offing for Leicester City? Flag stays down, and Taylor could be in with another chance here. Bot comes across. It's really good play from CJ Bot, isn't it? I think that she reads the game really well. She reads the danger, and she gets all the way across on the right fullback position to be able to to block that chance from Turland. Well, this game is open now. Has to know that they're leaving themselves exposed at the back in the search for the equaliser, the equaliser that they did have when they let it slip through their fingers just a few seconds later. And we're into the 90th minute. It's there one more twist in this fascinating WSL game at King Power Stadium. I think anything could happen, couldn't it, in these last, in these last few minutes? It'll be interesting to see how much added time has been added on. We've had a lot of stoppages for substitutions, but not too many for um, injuries. There will be six to play. Is that enough time for Leicester to find their way through again? Kamen, Takarada, it's loose from the Japanese. Mamiki tracking back. Howard can't commit herself. Terland comes to nothing. I think both teams are giving absolutely everything now. I think there's a lot of tired legs on the on the pitch at the moment, but they've still got to give their all for these last kind of five and five and a little bit minutes, just to try and either either win the game, draw the game, or you know anything could happen in those minutes. Up towards Robinson, Cayman rises. Maniki will try and of Simons. Robinson's got some room here. Taylor looking to stay on side, and here she is. This will settle it. Flag is up. That's tight, right idea from Bryson. But again, CJ Bart, she got there just in time. It's almost a 1v1 battle at the moment between either 
Taylor and Howard or Bott. Two minutes played of that minimum six added on. Still Brighton lead by three goals to two. And this pulsating WSL game. Lee Mengwen charging forward. And she's into the box and shrugs off Goodwin, who's dropped back in. And Hayley with a rather tame effort in the end, which is no problem for Cop. They just need to try and find a way to get a hold of the ball. Really important tackle that from Takarada because Haley looked like she was about to spin in behind there. Goodwin. Seems it. Cleared away, but only as far as Goodwin. Now Mamiki. Kamen just clips it in. Flipped around the corner by Lena Peterman. And watched harmlessly behind by the Brighton defence. I think in those positions I expected Janice came in in that central position to to let it fly and get a shot off. I think there's times in the game where you need to be intricate and the other times where you have to be really direct. Well, Lee Meng went on the ground. The referee has said that she has paused the clock. Right, and I'm try and eat up some more time here with a substitution. Kuhlberg is coming on. Li Mengwen, of course, just made that bursting run into the box. And just out of the corner of my eye, I saw her suggest to Katie Robinson just yeah. to cover for her. Yeah. yeah, she was in pain. I wasn't sure whether she just needed to get a breath back, but yeah, she looks like she's in, she's in pain and feeling the effects of something as she made that darting run. Yeah, I think Katie Robinson wanted to get back on the attack, didn't she? <laughs> Time ticking away, time slipping away for Leicester City. They trail by three goals to two. They were the ones that broke the deadlock in this game, Yuta Rantala. And a quick double from Brighton, one of them in controversial circumstances as Haley scored. Suggestions of a foul on Lisa Kopp before Peterman equalised and then less than a minute later Terland was there to slam home a volley and that's why we are where we are at 3-2 might there be one final opportunity there might just this is Yuta Rantala that is massive from Sophie Bagley the whole of King Power Stadium waited with bated breath to see where that would land, and it lands on the roof of her net. Yeah, I think that, that might have been the last chance. Great save, great save, and just, yeah, just hit it to the ground, and then it just went over the It just the kisses crossbar. the crossbar as well yeah. on its way over. Mr. can't make the corner kick count. Up towards Kulbert. It's a really clever first touch. CJ Bott chasing back. Well, we have played 96 minutes. Of course, there was a stoppage when Li Mengwen was down, so the game might not be dead yet. But Leicester are up the wrong end from their perspective. Haley just holding it in the corner. Takarada prodding at it. Leicester win a throw. It's 
a foul on Mamiki. There's only one direction this can go, and that's forward. We've played 97 minutes now. Last chance, saloon for Leicester. Just a little glance at the watch from referee Cheryl Foster. Well, the curtain comes down on a thrilling game of WSL football. A game in which Leicester took the lead through Uta Rantala. A game which exploded into life in the second half when she slammed into the roof of the net. But a quick fire double from the visiting Brighton. First, in controversial fashion, as Madison Haley went in on the goalkeeper, Lysa Kopp, after a wicked deflection from a corner, and it found its way into the back of the net. And then Mia Sari, as well, showing her capabilities. Brighton making it 2-1 before you knew it and then it was all about Leicester digging in and trying to find a response they did through the substitute Lena Peterman side footing into the corner and it felt like the momentum had swung in Leicester's favour but just seconds later they let the game slip Elizabeth Taylor with her 12th goal of the season smashing home a volley which ended up being the decisive goal of the game Yuta Rantala had a massive chance at the end when maybe she could have made a difference and found an equaliser but in the end not to be for Leicester no I think you can, you can see can't you can see how frustrated and gutted and devastated actually the Leicester side are I think for for large large proportions of the game I think you know Leicester were on top but as I mentioned earlier it's not just the performance it's the goals and and you know, the, I think it's really a vital time when you when you score a goal. It's those five, six minutes or six, seven minutes after the goal where you need to make sure that you are absolutely focused. And especially after Leicester scored their second goal and made it two all, and it was too easy, wasn't it, for Brighton to get through? And you know that they, they they'll have to obviously analyse, you know, what happened. But these are the games where I think Leicester could have taken all three points and actually could have been probably put to bed in the first half if they would have finished their chances. But yeah, really unfortunate for Leicester and you can see how elated Brighton are because those three points are absolutely vital for those. A disappointing afternoon for the Foxes. Rantala and Peterman's strikes cancelled out by Robinson, Haley, and Elizabeth Turland means that the final score here at King Power Stadium in the WSL finishes Leicester City 2, Brighton and Hove Albion 3. Who wants to join me? Shopping at King Power. Three day, two night, stay booked. See ya. To the rooftop bar. To snap a photo from my IG. To eat the famous pad thai. The new collection is calling me. Sure, there's a perfume I want. Let me ask my sis. Yes, of course I'm going. Bless our city. Fox never quit. Let's go. It's possible because King Power is more than just duty free. Shop latest trends in beauty and gadgets. Your coolest staycation. The legendary Pad Thai. Best street food in town. A place to support your team. A fancy dinner. Enjoy shopping at downtown stores and online. Or even the thrill of a new experience. Explore your everyday possibilities. The power of possibilities. King Power. This is Fox's Hub. A brand new place for the Blue Army to follow the Foxes this season. The new era begins for Leicester City. A chance to recalibrate and begin to dream new dreams. So, whether you're listening in, on the outside, head fades away through! Or watching live, make sure you don't miss a moment.
Miss Saigon. Le Mire is the belief that perfection lies within the details, where the finest ingredients deserve the finest craftsmanship. In every pursuit of perfection, there is passion and perseverance. Where attention to detail inspires a masterpiece that's balanced and in harmony. This is the Vermeer philosophy, brewed into every drop of Chang beer. This is the taste of Thai perfection. Chang beer, we brew friendship. Our lives move quickly. They're journeys of many choices. Journeys within which we each take our own turns for our own reasons. Trading is no different. Doing your thing, showing off your skills, changing the result for yourself. It's easy when you know how. With its financial services, FBS makes trading simple from anywhere on any device, putting knowledge and tools in your hands so that whether you have a lot of time or only a little, and whether you're doing it just for yourself today or for someone else's tomorrow, your ability will shine through. Wherever you want your trading journey to take you, it begins with FBS. FBS. Make your own way. It's possible to be, to go, to get, to be, to go, to get. Dining, traveling, shopping, chilling. Vacationing, cheering, everything is possible every day. The power of possibilities, King Power. Leicester 2, Brighton 3, Kerry Sarup still with us. Uh, a heck of a second half, very entertaining game. What are your immediate thoughts? It was an amazing game. So even though the first half was nil-nil, we said it's still insane and there was lots of chances. But I think both teams just took their chances this half. Um, I think Brighton came out and played better than the first half. Leicester dominated in, in that first half. And Brighton ultimately, they defended well. I think overall, Leicester probably created the most chances. And there were some great opportunities at the end, which I'm sure we'll come on to talk about. But um, yeah, overall, I think Leicester will, will be disappointed. I thought I said earlier, I thought they were going to go on to, to clinch it based on the first half. but. It just shows football can uh, can go either way, can't it? Yeah, and when Leicester did take their chance early in the in the second half, of course, it was only going to be one person, Jutta Rantala, the top scorer. Lovely work goal, this one. It was a great finish from her. It was a nice pass initially from Amike. You see the replay coming in now, and she gets on the ball and faces up. And just dribbling forward, and then uh, Rantala finds herself out wide. And again, we mentioned about the... Brighton fullback's not been aware of those players on the outside shoulder and it's a difficult angle but she's done fantastically well to fire it in, just put power on it, head down and she's fired it really well into the top corner, the top top of the goal but initially a great pass there from, from Amiki and nice strong finish to, to put them ahead. I imagine they're the really difficult ones for goalkeepers, just smash it high into the top of the goal, There's not many, not many people are saving that. No, that's why I was never a goalkeeper, <laughs> when someone's shooting from that close at that pace then I definitely wouldn't want to get in the way of it but yeah, an overall great finish from Rantala. So that was Leicester 1-0 up. Um, I'll tell you what, why don't we welcome in uh, Sophie, come in, come in the centre here. Um, Sophie Howard joining us um, pitch side. Uh, we've just been looking at the, at the first goal and um, Karis described it maybe as a, as a frustrating afternoon. Would you concur? I'd certainly agree, yeah. Yeah. Um, in terms of the actual game though, um, what's the, the overriding emotion, I suppose, aside of frustration? I think it's a typical theme that we dominate large parts of the game, then we don't capitalise. And at the moment, we are our worst enemy. And it's, as I said, become a theme and we just really need to have a hard look at ourselves, um, be very honest with ourselves and make sure we learn from these games. How, how do you go about that? Because I know that your manager was talking at, at the weekend at Spurs, uh, maybe the first 20 minutes, not your best. But then the rest of the game really got into it, but just couldn't 
quite get that goal when it when it happened. How do you sort of what do you learn from these sort of games, and how do you try to ensure that it doesn't happen in the future? The biggest thing is we need to put our heads down and work hard. Um, we don't ever stop working hard. I think, as I said, we need to have an honest self-assessment. That means watching lean back, um, sitting down as a team, reflecting, and then going again. We can't dwell too long. Um, these games happen, but it, it just can't happen anymore, so to speak. It's just more frustrating because, like, you're ahead in the game, and then it's uh, the two goals that Brighton scored to go two-one up uh, come from from errors, I suppose. Yeah, and that's what I mean when when I said we are our worst enemy. Um, we're giving away goals. It's not like teams are breaking us apart, um, and that is the most frustrating part about it. It's not not much fun these these <laughs> kind of games, is it? Where you... yeah. I've, I've been there myself. It's uh, they're really frustrating. I'm not saying first half. I thought you guys were were the better team. Yeah. You dominate possession and um, probably had the better chances. Yeah. But I think you know, this week and last week mistakes have cost you. But again, that counter attack, you know, and it's, yeah. um, it's with Brighton's pace and the likes of Robinson. I think they've kind of exploited that and it's hard because I like your attacking style of play you know yeah. with the full backs going on but then I guess just that vulnerability at the back has, has cost sometimes but ultimately as you mentioned it's, it's mistakes isn't it? Yeah I agree the way we play we're very expansive yeah. and those mistakes cost us I think we definitely need to be better at breaking those cat tucks down or, or apart um, early fouls that's yeah. what we're good at usually and that's what we live of but we just haven't been good enough in recent games. Yeah, I think take you know stay positive. I thought you played very well. And it was a great game to watch, certainly as a, a neutral fan, yeah. wasn't it? But it's not not for you. You're frustrated. But I guess just got to keep going. And every game's important, isn't it, until the end of the season? Yeah, definitely. Um, every game for us is like a cup final. Um, that's just what it's like being part of Leicester. Um, but as I said, we need to put our heads down, work hard, and make sure we learn from these games. We were looking at uh, a little bit earlier. Obviously, that, that takes Brighton uh, above Leicester in, in the table. But there's almost like a little mini league. Uh, of teams are very, very close mm -hmm. together. Almost all of you you've got in the next few weeks. What is this run like to be a part of? Exciting. Uh, as I said, the next couple of games, every game is a cup final, and that's how we're going to go into every game. We want to win every game we play, but we know the importance of the up in games in recent weeks. You've almost got like your future in your own hands, right? That's the, the, the positive, I suppose. Yeah. You can take, as uh, as Case was saying, in the fact that you play quite well and, and have created chances into these into these games that are coming up. Yeah, I think that is why it's so frustrating because we play well, we just don't reward ourselves. Um, if we were rubbish, we wouldn't. I wouldn't be standing here and saying it's frustrating. Yeah, That's yeah. just how football is. Um, again, there's positive to take from these games, definitely. Um, but the biggest thing we need to be honest with ourselves now because this is not good enough. We saw you all having your your, your little um, circle there at full time. What what has the manager said to you? What's Jen sort of said to to focus on? <laughs> Pretty much what I just said. Really? Yeah. <laughs> we're our worst enemy. We, we make mistakes and, and that is why we're losing games at the moment. I think there's positives, Jen said, that we're playing well, that we're dominating large parts of the game. Um, but we're not doing our, ourselves justice at the moment. And that's what Jen said in, in the huddle. In terms of, uh, of the rest of the, the second half, the second last goal when it, when it did come, uh, Lynn Pittman has obviously had a little bit of time out of the team of late, but to get her back and clearly closing on on full fitness as well. That must be a real positive. Certainly, um, Lena's a box striker. Um, give Lena the ball in, in boxing she'll score. I've known, known Lena for probably 10, 12 years and she's always been like that. She hasn't changed. It's good to have her back. Um, I think she still needs to build match minutes, she said herself. Um, it's good that we had Aileen in the nine, work really, really hard and then it was just time for Lena and that goal she came on and she did her job pretty much. Mm. I think that's what's good about your team is that there's a variety of goal scorers. Mm. You're not relying on on one goal scorer you know watch you against Birmingham in the FA Cup and there was you know three or four different goals and that's what's good even today a variety of goal scorers so I think that's a positive that you can take and good to see players like Peter coming back to fitness and just everyone getting getting minutes and everyone contributing I think it's, it's something positive that you can keep going forward. Certainly it's not only that we've got loads of goal, different goal scorers but that's why we've got a good squad everyone brings something in and whatever we need in certain games that's a team that Jen will put out and I think that's a very good thing to have. We were talking before the game, weren't we, that, that they've made four changes in today, but all the four players who come in are high-quality footballers. The strength and depth at the club right now, what's that like to be a part of? It feels like there's proper competition for places now all yeah. over the pitch. Yeah, it's very exciting. It's certainly a competition because um, I think competition can come nasty, but, but by no means it's healthy competition. It's 100% every single session and whoever trains best, whoever's performing best, whatever the game plan is, those players will play.
And Karis, you know from, from your career as well, that, that must be a really exciting place to be when you've got players coming in, playing well, scoring goals, contributing. Yeah, it only pushes you on as a player. I mean, you know, we've both been around the game uh, a long, long time. You're not as old as me, so I'm not saying you're <laughs> old, but I'm, I'm just saying, you know, you, you've played a long time in the league and uh, you'll see how much the team has developed, certainly yeah. at Leicester. Yeah. Um, and it, is, it only makes you better, you know. There's good players sitting on the bench, so mm -hmm. it just shows the, the quality of the, the squad. And that's what you need, certainly towards this latter end of the season where players are picking up a few niggles or you, you need to rotate. You've got the big cup games coming up as well, yeah. so... I think, yeah, again, you know, that's another focus you've got. You know, as much as you want to um, focus on the league, you've got the FA Cup to look forward to, which is, is really exciting. So I guess as a team, you just have to pick yourselves up and go again and look forward to those next few really important games. Yeah, certainly. Um, as you said, the Cup is a big competition for us. Um, but the league as well is a massive, massive focus. We've still got our targets that we want to achieve. Um, as I said, every game is a Cup final for us. Indeed. Look, it's not, not very warm around here. <laughs> Should we let you go, Sophie? Much, really appreciate your time. Commiserations today and uh, best of luck the rest of the thank season. You. Thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks a lot, Sophie. I, you, can see, you can just see the frustration, can't you? It's, it must be horrible to have to you know, come out and talk to us a lot when, uh, when you just had a really <laughs> annoying <know> <laughs> defeat like that. Yeah, she's done well to, to stay this yeah. long. I know, no, I wouldn't have if I'd uh, just lost the game like that. Yeah, I'd, I'd just walk away, wouldn't even come. So fair play to <laughs> Sophie for... Uh, for coming along and, and speaking to us but yeah you know she's kind of emulating the the words that, that Jenny has said to the girls mm. after the game is that yeah you know they played well they created some really good chances but unfortunately that's football today mm. just just wasn't their day if we look at the the goals that, that Brighton did score to go to go back ahead it felt a little bit harsh to do them with Sophie here um but the, the equalizer was a strange goal in the, it came from a Leicester corner that breaks down and then Brighton sprint back up the other end win a, a corner themselves and a bit of scrappy one. Is there a foul on the goalkeeper though? Yeah, just watching the replay back. So I think initially Caymans kind of hasn't dealt with it too well. And I think ultimately the players, she challenged it. You know, she's not put her elbows in the way. She just jumped up and, and tried to win the header, which is a forward. That's what you have to do. You can't just stand there and not challenge at all. And the keeper's actually got a hand to it, but then she's actually patted it onto the back of Haley's head and it, it's gone in. So I think it's just, again, two unfortunate errors. Um, in that, in that particular goal, but it has been costly. I mean, we were talking when we were watching that second half, the referee today's Gerald um, Boss, he's, he's a former player. Yeah. You were saying that sort of gets the, the game a little bit more. Is that maybe what you've seen there, where that's like contact that is natural to the game and should be let go? Yeah, and she was a forward herself, so yeah, she oh, definitely she wouldn't have uh, <laughs> Strikers the, uh, Union then, <laughs> Strikers Union. Strikers <laughs> Union. No, we were chatting about it, yeah. I think having ex-players as referees is a good thing because they understand that the game is still physical, you know, they've been there themselves, they understand certain scenarios and I, and I think in that case, you know, that's why she didn't give it because she understands the fact she was a striker herself is that you do have to challenge the goalkeeper as long as you don't push, you know, mm. proper barge into them and not compete for the ball at all. But in that in that case, uh, Hayley, the Brighton player, she, she was competing and it's worked off in her favour. And they were only level for about five or six minutes before, again, I guess a, a, a mistake gives Brighton the, the lead. Yeah, it was a, a poor error here from, from the keeper cop. I think she just should have just hit it higher, but she's tried to drill it in and, and then she's had a bit of rush of blood to her head and come off the line and especially with Katie Robinson, she's a quick player, she's going to get there and she, she's nicked it past her and, and, and slotted it in. But as Sophie was mentioning, you know, they were, Leicester players were kind of their own down for, they have to look at themselves individually and at their own individual quality and in, in this instance, you know, the keeper will know you know it's her mistake that has cost them in this particular instance but we have to give credit to katie robertson she's done well to take it around the keeper there as well, yeah, and slot, slot it in into that uh, into the goal the, the frustration there as well is like leicester do try to play the right way if you like but it does come with risks and unfortunately that's one of the risks yeah so you mentioned they play yeah. very expansive you could see it in that picture there they've, they've spread out the fullbacks have got high even the center backs have, have spread out wide and it's say, it's say it's great because if it pays off, it's great and it works well and it's nice, pretty football, but uh, it can be very costly as well. And that's a, a per example there of when it doesn't come off. You've got those big open spaces and that's easy for the, the Brighton players to penetrate through. But Jen Foster made a couple of changes and almost immediately one of them paid off with what turned out to be the equaliser where uh, Zakharada gets on the ball and a heck of a through ball to find Peterman. Yeah, it was. Again, the, the Japanese girls, they're very good at finding those intricate passes. And yeah, it's a play by her. She picks it in the middle, as you can see, and she's, she's driving forward. And it's like a pinpoint pass, isn't it, really? Right so, between so the centre-back and the full-back. And 
nice touch from Peterman and it seemed like slow motion at the time we were watching it and the, the crowd were, were screaming for it to score and that can be quite a pressurised situation but she does really well to just take it in her stride and, and slot it in down to Sophie Bagley's right side so yeah great great finish and really good opportunity then for Leicester to get the equaliser and we thought they might go on to get another yeah. one but unfortunately went uh, went in Brighton's favour I, I saw we were saying Lily Peterman a proper box like you can see it she's there is she on the half turn on the edge of the box she's asking for that ball almost as soon as Takarada picks it up yeah she's a very clever striker and she just gets in those positions off the back shoulder of the centre back that are really difficult to pick up and yeah I think she could call it like a fox in the box isn't it yeah. she's, a, she's a poacher and that's definitely what you want in your strikers certainly when they're they're coming on and, and having an impact and I think the substitutes that did come on for Leicester today you know Takarada Peterman I think even CJ Bott at right back her pace you know she did some good defensive um, runs back and, and stopped even more chances for, for Brighton. So I think the substitutes that came on did a good job. And they get themselves level, but barely a minute. Was it even a minute later, almost straight from kickoff? The person we talked about before the game, Elizabeth Turland, got tw two in the reverse fixture and gets what turned out to be the winner. Yeah, I think she likes scoring it, Le Leicester, doesn't she? It's a good set here from Hayley and she's, she struck it really well, Turland, there. But I was saying to you earlier, she was quite quiet in the game, you know, hadn't had many chances, many shots at goal, but I think that's the sign of a true striker, is that even though they don't get many chances. It's always alive when the ball's yep, in the box. When those chances do come. You know, that's quite hard technique to, as it's dropping down. She kept focused, kept her eyes on the ball and got her body over it and she struck it really well down to that bottom left hand corner. And it just a really good set as well, wasn't it, from the from the strike partner? Yeah, yeah, it was a good set from from Hayley. Um I mentioned earlier about Leicester sometimes they can ball watch and I wasn't quite sure if CJ Bott was aware of her and she'd got the wrong side of her, but yeah, good good play from Hayley to set it back to Turland and a great finish from her. Uh, well, let's welcome in um, Leicester assistant manager. Come in, Jen, right in the middle of us, uh, please. Uh, we've just been talking um, to Sophie, uh, who was devastated, really. What's, what's the overriding emotion saying? Yeah, it's huge disbelief. Um, I said before, we were, we were on top for large spells in the first half and we have to capitalise on those moments when we are on top. Um, and then, look, we put a few good passages of play away, uh, scored a couple of good goals, but we were, we were really poor on the transitions, you know, and we knew that was where Brighton posed their threat, uh, which was disappointing for us because we've done a lot of work on it and, and we knew that that was coming. But, yeah, unfortunately, we just, we just weren't on it today. Why, why do you think, we mentioned the transition when we spoke before the game, why do you think that turned out to be the, the thing that, that really hurt you today? I just think with their, with their threat and their pace up front, you know, they knew, they knew from the last game that we played that I think in the way that we build, um, that sometimes we can be exposed on those transition moments. And I think in previous games, we've, we've done okay with it. Um, but I think definitely in the last two games, we, we, we should have been tied with it for sure. Is that something you might change for games going forward? Because we were talking about, you, you know, you like to get nice and expansive, both fullbacks like to bomb on. But obviously now that's cost you in, in two games, you know. So is that something, I know you mentioned you worked on it in training, yeah. so I'm sure it's disappointing yeah. for you as the coach yeah. to see you still conceding goals with the transition. But is that something now you're, like, you're really just going to tie it up? Do you think you will adapt, play a little bit, or are you going to still try and play that kind of risky, you know, get your bodies forward? Or is it something really that you need to think about? Yeah, look, I, think, games. I think it's difficult because um, when we go forward, we put such a threat and we need to commit those players forward. And actually, I think if, if we're more clinical with, with what we do up top, we actually don't cause those transition moments. So, yeah, it's a tough one. Obviously, it's, it's difficult when you are conceding those transitions to be able to go, oh, actually, do we have to change it? So I, I think personally today, we just needed to be, to be tighter on the transitions because actually centre-back should have been stepping in. And when they did step in, we, we stopped any counters. Um, when we stepped off, that's when they were able to turn and get, get runs in behind. So that was a disappointing thing for us today. Yeah. And for all of that, right at the very, very death in a 96th minute, almost get another equaliser. What's going through your mind when, um, when this happens? <laughs> well, I mean, you to put those away all, all the time. So, you know, look, I think it was, it was a good save. It was probably quite at, um, at baggers. You know, I think probably that, that touch probably just takes you a little bit too wide. Um, but yeah, look, you know, Uta, Uta puts those away from us um, every week. So yeah, it was disappointing. I thought it was a great chance and, and to come away with a point. Yeah, we, we, were, we were right behind it as we were walking around here and it, the spin, <laughs> look, we thought it was just a drop in, didn't we, Carrie? So we were just the wrong side of the bar. 
Yeah, yeah. Pat Pat's has just got that crucial touch, which has took it a little bit wider. Yeah. It was a it was a difficult angle. I think Grant has actually done well to even you know get it on target. But yeah, look, I guess lucky for Sophie Bagley, it could have gone anywhere. Yeah. It actually yeah. span on top of the crossbar. Yeah. Yeah, at one yeah, point, but yeah, yeah that's yeah, football, isn't it? You know, yeah. you can dominate games, and sometimes the looks just not on your side. Yeah. Were there familiar, um, I guess, issues is probably too strong a word, but from from Tottenham last weekend, where that final ball isn't almost there, and you're creating chances, just not quite taking them. Was that similar kind of theme again today with the the amount of possession and pressure that you managed to put on? Yeah, I think in the first half, probably more so. Um, you know, there was a couple of times where we had possession around the box and. The final ball was just that little bit too far and, and took us out of the half space, which which was disappointing because when we get into those half spaces, we can create those those shooting opportunities. So, yeah, a little bit of detail from the first half that uh, I thought we could be better. But in the second half, I actually thought we, we got opportunities in and around the box and, you know, looked bright and were throwing uh, bodies at it and getting, getting blocks. And look, I think there were some shots that were taken from outside the box, which is not really like us. Um, you know, I think we need to create good chances rather than, um, than, than shoot from outside the box. Well, obviously they're sort of one percenters, so um, yeah, it was just just not our day, I guess. Look, Villa coming up at, at the weekend. I guess when you lose a game in the manner that you did today, how how do you have to try and pick the girls up now? Is is it quite easy? Are they are they able to sort of get this out of their system quite quickly, or do you need to help them on that way almost? Um, look, a bit of both. We've got uh, great professionals in our in our team, and look, I think they'll go away and. Um, Take a day off and, and digest it and watch it back and then they'll they'll come back to us with um with their thoughts and then obviously we will as well and look at the end of the day we can't dwell on it too much we just need to learn from from the the good and the positives um sorry the good and the bad today and then um yeah take it into villa and, and look at it's a must-win game jen appreciate your time thank you for coming over commiserations today but appreciate your time thank you very thank much thank you thank you we'll see you jim and you I've not Sorry. got any, any, hands, any hands spare. Um, I mean, you, you can see, can't you? Just This is the, the horrible part of football, isn't it? Where you almost do, you feel like you do almost everything right, create lots of chances, and then two mistakes get your opponents ahead, and, and it's difficult to come back from. Yeah, and it just shows how you know tight and competitive this league is. You can't afford to make those mistakes. We were talking earlier about this kind of mini league that, that Brighton are in now. and trying to finish as high, as high as they can, whether that's seventh or, or sixth place, it lo looks like realistically, but you know, those chances cost you. Um, and that's what's happened today ultimately. And I think as players, you know, we talk about trying to pick themselves up. They can definitely take, um, you know, heart from today's performance. It's not like they, they weren't working hard or they had a bad performance. You know, they did, the team did play well. It's just fortunately sometimes those mistakes can, can be really costly. So I think the girls will, you know, they can reflect on it tomorrow, but they should still be in good spirits going into the Villa game because they did put on an impressive performance today. Is that the, is that the crucial thing now almost? You just forget the fact that you've lost it late, forget the fact that you very nearly got a point in the 96th minute, focus on the good play, the good performances, the good chances and take that into the weekend. Yeah, you've got to. You know, there's no point in dwelling on it. And then I think certainly for me, that's what I was always like as a player. I never dwelled on it too much because it's in the past now, it's happened. But you definitely have to watch the game back and realise what as an individual did you do well or could do better, but also what did the team do well and what could be better. So, like I say, lots of positives to, to take from the game. So I'm sure Jen will, will highlight those in, in the analysis session when they're back in on Tuesday. I'm sure it won't take them long to get it out of the Let's system. <laughs> <laughs> um, Karis, thank you so much for your company. Really appreciate it. Good game, at least. We got something to talk is, about, even yeah, if the Foxes didn't quite uh, get the result that, that we were after. Um, we can go and get warm now, can't we? Because yeah. the temperature's dropped in this <laughs> corner. Next time we'll do it where the, where the sun's out. Um, but I thank you for your company today. Commiserations to the Foxes. A defeat at home against Brighton Hove Albion. They'll go again next weekend on the road at Aston Villa. Uh, from all of us here, goodbye.